Hampshire and uh, Northamptonshire and uh, day three but this might very well be uh, the last day of this game because at 11 o'clock in exactly 10 minutes or just under 10 minutes time North Ants will resume their second innings following on uh, at 50 for two and they still trail Hampshire by 261 runs. Sam Whiteman is 25 not out. Rob Keogh is uh, eight uh, not out. Uh, John Turner, on his championship debut, uh, has a wicket. And that other wicket that's been taken so far uh, belongs to uh, Keith uh, Barker. Uh, the sun is out. There is hardly a cloud in the sky. Uh, much different from... Uh, is that me? I can hear myself in the background. It is probably me. So I will just turn myself off like that. Look at that magic. <laughs> I can do magic as well. Marvellous. Uh, most people say I can't do cricket commentary. Press the digitation yes, of a morning. I can, but I can do magic. Uh, your commentary team for today uh, is uh, a little later. TMS commentator, Gloucestershire County player, now former Vipers Academy all-rounder, uh, Melissa Story. Uh, but uh, to take you through up to the start of play and a little bit beyond. It's myself, Kevin James, and he's an even better friend to us than he was yesterday <laughs> from BBC Northampton. Andrew Red, Andrew, good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Morning, everybody. Yes, it's, uh, it's spot the cloud this morning, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And whatever else happens today, I don't think the rain is going to save anybody. Um, it's, it's absolutely glorious and... Uh, a few people already starting to file in, and from Northampton's point of view, well, can they make a fight of it? It was uh, quite a, uh, it was an interesting interview last night with uh, the head coach John Sadler after a lot of uh, a lot of social media stuff, which was fairly vitriolic, I have to say, directed at Northampton's efforts, not just in this game but in the last two or three games, and uh, um, coaching staff are well <laughs> well aware of that, believe me. Um, but yeah, I did quite a, I think quite a, a frank interview last night with uh, with the head coach, and uh, one of the things he was saying was, you know, we know that as a batting unit we need to show some fight, we need to, you know, embrace the whole business of of red ball batting, and he actually cited uh, the way James Vince played in this match in the first innings, where you know he had to work, he had to work really hard, you know, a wonderful stroke player that James Vince is, he was in there. Well, 180 balls for 95, um, because that was what his team needed. And the point that John Sadler was making was, uh, in, in his words, we don't need to, we can, you know, fighting for 20 overs is fine. We need to be fighting for whole sessions and whole days. Now, never never was that more indicated than here, uh, more necessary than here. Whether Northamptonshire can do it, of course, remains to be seen. Yeah, uh, no work today for Emilio Gay and for Hassan Azad. They can put their feet up in the dressing room and watch all the others work as hard as uh, possible. And that's what it uh, needs today from uh, Northamptonshire. Show a bit of fight. Uh, it's an old cliche, but that's exactly what they've got to do. And also just show a bit of pride uh, as well, because they've been thoroughly outplayed uh, in this uh, game, Hampshire. Uh, if you're just joining us and uh, just want a very quick uh, reclap, uh, Hampshire batting first, uh, made 367 all out. Uh, Northamptonshire 56 all out uh, yesterday. That is the lowest ever total uh, on this ground. And uh, I think Hampshire will be quite relieved, uh, not just because they bowled them out for 56, because the previous lowest total on this ground was actually held by Hampshire, <laughs> or 57, when they were bowled out uh, in the penultimate game of last year of the season against uh, Kent so uh, no longer do Hampshire hold that distinguished uh, title it is uh, now belongs to Northampton yes it was also Northampton's lowest total in Hampshire wasn't it as we uh, we yes. established yesterday previously at 60 way back in 1908 which even I don't remember <laughs> but um, yeah it, it's it, it's happening you know it, it's, it's the old um, importance of being earnest line isn't it you know to, to, to be bowled out for, for 70 once might be misfortune to do it twice seems like carelessness and it basically happened three times now hasn't it I mean yeah. against Hampshire uh, in the previous meeting between these two sides bowled out for 63 following on against Nottinghamshire last Saturday uh, bowled out for 72 in the second innings and then bowled out for 56 here so uh, you know it, it, there is there is clearly a problem um, it's the last championship match of this run of course the T20 blast starts for Northamptonshire on Wednesday, so for quite a few of these players, um, then there's not actually going to be a lot of meaningful cricket for a while. And well, interesting, I, I did raise the point we were talking about on air yesterday, Kevin. You made the point that you know, your solution for some of the batters who are clearly out of nick is for them just to be going out and playing 
somewhere, anywhere, club game, second 11 game, just get some time in the middle um, feeling bat on ball. Um, but th there's actually no uh, long format second 11 cricket for Northamptonshire for a while, I don't think. Um, they've got T20 second 11 cricket, mm. but that's actually not going to do the, the job. So whether some of these will fight, finish up perhaps going into the club game and um, you know, 50 over or whatever in, in most league cricket now, thereabouts, whether they actually finish up going out there and just trying to get some time in the middle, we'll see. But, uh, well, I'd, li I'd like to think that we could still be here tomorrow morning, but, um, mm. well, we'll see. Uh, well, anyway, uh, if even if uh, the game finishes early uh, today, uh, the crowd, such as it is, and it's, uh, it's building, uh, there won't be loads and loads, of course, but it'll be a decent championship day uh, crowd because it's a nice day. But if they are so disappointed that this game finishes early, they can actually just turn their heads and just look over to the nursery ground because the Hampshire Academy will be playing against Lymington in a southern... Uh, it used to be called Southern Electric. Uh, other electricity firms are called... Uh, uh, regional firms available, of course. Uh, but it's a southern uh, Premier League encounter between the Hampshire Academy and Lymington. And a certain Gareth Berg <laughs> is turning out for uh, Lymington, as he does, because he lives down that sort of way when he's not playing for uh, Northamptonshire. Formerly of this parish, of course, five years. He had five seasons here, very, five very good seasons. And uh, he is playing for Lymington just away to our left from 12.30. So I'm very much looking forward yeah. uh, to watching Mr. Berg, uh, if, if that is the case, and this game finishes early, as I'm sure some of the crowd will do, just turn their attentions away to our left after all the action finishes here. Well, Mel Melissa pointed out, if North Hampshire need a, need a concussion sub or something, then they've just got to pull him out of the Lymington side and, and, Go and score get, get him on the park here. Well, str yeah. stranger things have happened. Who knows? He actually did text me. I think I'm not revealing too much. Gareth Berg did text me last night saying, no, I'm over on the nursery ground tomorrow. I said, yes, I know. I might pop over. Love to see him bowl. Played in the first game between these two sides uh, earlier in the season. Not uh, selected for this one, but I guess it's a... Well, I say it's more of a game for the spinners, but actually the seamers have done most of the work. We haven't even seen Mason Crane, apart from Mason Crane's wonderful throw at one stump to get rid of Hassan Azad. I wouldn't even know Mason Crane was playing. It's a fantastic bit of, uh, fantastic bit of fielding, wasn't it? it although, it, as we said at some length yesterday, not the, um, not the best piece of running we've, uh, we've ever seen. Yeah, it, it, was, was. it was a horrible misjudgment, of, you know, wonderful bit of fielding, but you've, always, you know, you, you've got to assume that, uh, that that sort of thing can happen. And, and when you take a single to a fielder of, uh, of Mason Crane's quality in the first over... Uh, replying to a, a fairly solid opposition total when he just needed to get through to lunch unscathed. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, wasn't. It won't be on North Hampshire's highlights reel this season. Put it that way. <laughs> and uh, almost as memorable uh, when we uh, t wind the, when we wound the tapes back to look at the aftermath of that run out was watching Hassan Azad walk past Emilio Gay, <laughs> and uh, there was no eye contact, no. nothing said between the two. Absolutely, it was. Uh, it, it was, yeah. It, uh, you you sort of you find yourself thinking from a Northamptonshire perspective, what can happen next? You know, what 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 else can go wrong? Um, and well, we may be about to find out. Here's Moabas then from our commentary in the northern end, round the wicket, first delivery to Whiteman as he pushes that out quietly on the, the offside. Moabas yesterday afternoon, I thought was a little unlucky because uh, it was a high-class spell that he bowled, angling it into the left-hander. The ball then just straightening and going past the outside edge, and there was a bit of forward prodding. Generally, the ball hit the bat, but at times you could just tell the North Ants batters weren't quite sure where that ball was ending up it as it arrived. It was lovely, it was very was unlucky. He was bowled beautifully last yeah. night, it really was. It was a masterclass, terrific stuff. He is. He's got three slips then as he comes in again to uh, Whiteman, who played quite nicely, actually, to be fair to him, as he pushes out quietly up to mid-off. He's 25 uh, not out uh, overnight, and just loved the way that anything slightly offline was worked on the leg side for ones, just picked the bowling off when it wasn't quite as accurate as it had been. And then had some lovely punch drives through the uh, yep. covers to to complement those other shots on the leg side. And that's what he did for seven hours at Taunton, to make 130 not out and, uh, and save the match for Northamptonshire there. Yeah. Good exhibition of just controlled batting in 
a situation which wasn't great as that's just again pushed quietly out on the offside. Good start from Abbas here. I have to say we're talking about what what possibly what what next could go wrong. I was for a moment yesterday when um, Save Zabe got hit on the glove, didn't he? One that just just got a little bit big on him, and I was when he was, the physio was out there. I thought, oh no, surely not. Two days or three days before the uh, yeah. before the blast, where, in which he will obviously be a, a key player for for Northamptonshire. That really would have been a, a horrible blow, but hopefully he's okay. Very much so. As a bass in the sunshine. Comes in again, goes to Whiteman. Whiteman pushes forward a little bit fuller this time and pushed firmly up to mid-off. We're Nick Gubbins fields. Interesting to see if Ben Sanderson uh, appears in the in the blast. Obviously, he's been a regular member of the side in the shortest format for the last few seasons, as indeed in every other format, and uh, hasn't played in the last two championship matches. Picked up a bit of a, a niggle down at Taunton, but I'm sure North Aberdeen will want him in, mm. in the side for the, uh, the first game on Wednesday. 100%. Abbas, who will be taking a couple of weeks off. Uh, Bowles, again, that's pushed up to Gubbins at mid-off. So, beautiful scene. A lovely day for cricket. Lovely day for watching cricket. Lovely day for commentating on cricket. You can take your pick. We don't have a choice. <laughs> no. I have to say, though, I mean, this is... This is almost like the start of the season. We, we, <laughs> we mentioned uh, the other morning, it's... You know, we've had so many cold, miserable, dark, dank days so far this spring. This is just... We, yeah. I think we've earned this, to be honest. I think you're right. As, uh, Whiteman leaves that alone. It's quite close to off stump, but it is a good leave, and that's the end of the first over of uh, the morning. That was a maiden from Mr. Abbas. Seven overs, three maidens, none for six. And Northamptonshire still 261 runs behind in this game. The other thing to mention, of course, is that we will be... Uh, Bowling extra overs today because of the, uh, of the time we lost yesterday. So it's 104 overs in the day. So 10 past one for lunch. So if you're sorting out your catering arrangements, you'll just need to hang on a little bit longer before you have your lunch. And tea, well, provisionally at four o'clock, but that's quite a long way off. They always seem, they always seem somehow, they tell you, it's, it's, it's with 104 overs, it's a fixed feast, it's four o'clock, and then always something happens, and you finish up <laughs> trying to work out when it's actually going to be taken. Keith Barker it is, who's going to start proceedings from the far end, from the Pavilion End Bowl, beautifully yesterday. 12 over, seven maidens, four for 13, didn't concede a run until his sixth over. And here he is running into bowl to Rob Keogh, around the wicket, and Keogh leaves that outside the off stump. Again, tight leave, close to the off stump, but... Keo again with, I won't say a point to prove because his record tells you how good a player he is, but he's just been a little bit short of runs of late. Back to pair in the previous match against Nottinghamshire. Missed out in the first innings here, was out for five. Could catch it. Third slip by Joe Weatherly. But a chance to bat very long here, which Northamptonshire need him to do. He's Barker in again, bowling to Keogh. He's in behind that, plays it up to mid on. And there's no run. Good crowd. And um, what is nice to see is there's a few more people actually not sitting in the stands to get out of the rain, as we saw last night. <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was full of admiration. I was full of admiration, certainly, for the, the handful of spectators. And we have that sort of two and a half hours off for rain. And there some, must be some doubt as to whether we would have got back on, thanks to the efforts of the ground staff we did. But there were still people who were sat all the way through it and were there when we were able to get back on the field at quarter to six is Barker in again bowling to Keogh first run of the morning nudged away just behind square on the leg side for one Keogh goes to nine and Northamptonshire to 51 for two 260 behind still and uh, yeah there's a little little phalanx up there in the Colin Ingleby McKenzie stand who stoically sat through the the heavy rain and uh, were rewarded in the end by well, an interesting final session. And as Kevin was saying, a bit of a masterclass from Mohammed Abbas, but without on that occasion actually taking a wicket. Field changing over for the left-handed Whiteman. Three slips in. And here's Barker with the main pavilion behind him. Over the wicket to Whiteman, who pushes forward. Just plays across that a little, but it goes out to mid-wicket. And there's no run. Fielded there by Fletcher Middleton. Three slips, a backward point, extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And Mohamed Abbas down there at long leg, down below us, having a drink already. 
Must be nice to have a almost like a sort of personal valet down there after <laughs> after one over. Here's Barker in again outside the off stump, left alone by Sam Whiteman. Yeah, I'm, I I don't know. There's something about this. I, I fully expect a heavy rear guard action from uh, Northamptonshire. The sun out, not the quickest of pitches. Drying pitch started dry. Will get even drier. I think we might see a bit of Mason Crane today and a bit of Liam Dawson. I think Hampshire will have to work a bit hard second time around. Well, that will be nice. Here's Barker. And again, Bolton Ooh. beats Whiteman outside the off stump. Full length draws Whiteman into the stroke. Goes past the outside edge into the gloves of Ben Brown. And that's the end of Keith Barker's first over of the day. One run off it. 51 for two, Northamptonshire with Whiteman on 25. Rob Keogh on nine. Because I'm enjoying your company, Kevin, as I always Are do. You? And it's I, I, I always, of you. and I always enjoy coming to uh, coming yeah. to Southampton. It's a, it's a lovely place to work and great view of the, the game we have here and get looked after very well. And uh, yeah. I say from Northampton's point of view, I, I just think it's important that they you know, they make a little bit of a statement here. Yeah, definitely. If, even if they even if they don't manage to save the game, if they could, you know. Get it deep into Take it deep today. into today, yeah. maybe even, who knows, take it into tomorrow, That's right, then yeah. they would have achieved something. Yeah, I, you know, most people would think, oh, it's going to be over middle of the afternoon latest, but you know, if it, the further you can push it into day three, and you never know. Forward is Keo to Mohamed Abbas, and it's a good diving stop in the covers by Mason Crane. Well, one of my correspondents this morning um, came out with a statement that it will be over by lunch, so... Um, be surprised. <laughs> well, we'll see. But yeah, uh, I just—I mean, if it was overcast, you know, and, and a bit heavy, and the ball maybe just swinging a little bit more. I mean, even in the couple of overs that uh, Abbas has bowled so far, there's there's not a lot there for him at the moment. I mean, that may change as they get a little looser. I think Barker just got one to straighten on Whiteman in that the end of that last over, but I can feel it's a big wicket-taking day today. Keogh's on the back foot outside the off stump. It's pushed to extra cover, but of course, as we saw in the first innings, a lot of Northamptonshire players brought brought about their own downfall. And, um, you know, if that happens again, then of course, uh, it could be over quite quick, but I don't know, I just think it could be a longish day. And then, of course, as, as I say, if you want a bit more cricket, we'll wander over to the nursery ground and have yeah. a bit of a watch. So there's plenty of cricket going on on this site today. Nip through the tunnel. Yeah, not unless Gareth Berg runs through the Hampshire Academy, and then that might be over before this, who knows? <laughs> yeah, here comes uh, Abbas. Oh, that has bounced outside the off stump, and Keo just about pulled the battle out of the way in time. Will he take the new ball, do you reckon? Bergie? Uh, I don't know the Limington team, I, I have to say. I know where Limington is. It's a lovely sport. Uh, whether the cricket team matched that, I don't know. Stayed there last year when, uh, when, we, were on the, when we were on the Isle of Wight, and uh, it was my, my base for a couple of nights. Beautiful spot. Trundled over the Solent on the ferry. I could, I could happily live there, really, if it wasn't logistically a bit of a problem at the moment, but... It's a lovely, it's beautiful. Open air swimming pool outside the off stump. That's come back a bit at uh, Kia. Yeah, there's an open air swimming pool down by the seafront there at Limington. Nice walk. I think somebody told me, and I haven't done it yet, but I think between Limington and further along the coast, what's it called along the walk? Um, I'll think of it in a minute. And, and there's a very great walk along the, the seafront there, or the water. Uh, I think of it. I think you go past a lot of flats, don't you? Sort of mm. mud flats and what have you. But uh, yeah, it's a good spot. Good high street. Well, uh, you see you're selling it. You're yeah, selling, well, I'm, you're I'm, I'm, me, I'm the tourist officer for Limington at the moment, <laughs> outside the stump. <laughs> Keo leaves that one uh, alone. Melissa's looking it up for me. I can't remember the name of the place. Uh, I'll have a look. Don't worry. About it. I know <laughs> there's. I know there's that wonderful view if you go to to Hengistbury Head, just round the coast from from Bournemouth, and you look down towards. Muddiford Spit and then beyond to, to Milford on Sea and, and uh, it's a love that's it's just a gorgeous part of the world. Yeah. Abbas at the top of his mark. And there's also a pub at this place. Um forget what that's called as well. Keo gets one straight, keeps a little the Solent Way walk. Um I, I don't know if it, it might be called that. I don't know. I'm gonna have a look it out. Well um Andrew takes over um Commentary duties for this over it gives me give me a bit of time to have a look. <laughs> yes, the tourist board's doing its uh, doing its work <laughs> at the moment. We w we will of course keep you up to date with what's happening in all the other games uh, around the country. One or two of them, as with this one, could well finish today. Um, not least at Lords, where Middlesex 
are following on a long way behind against Somerset. 87 for one in their second innings Middlesex. Still 142 behind after being bowled out for 175 yesterday. At Trent Bridge, Nottinghamshire looking to stretch their lead against Essex. Keith Barker is running in towards us to the left-handed Whiteman who drives nicely but straight to mid-off and there's no run. Nottinghamshire 331 for five, replying to the Essex total of 298 all out. Kent have already lost a wicket this morning against Surrey at the Oval. This one, again, you would probably put uh, a little bit on it finishing today. Kent now 82 for five in their second innings, which means they are still two runs behind with five wickets in hand. Here's Barker in again, bowls to Whiteman. Forward pushes it out to extra cover this time. And uh, once again, there's no run. So Surrey looking strong favourites to win that one today. In Division 2, Gloucestershire battling to try and save the follow-on against Durham with the last pair in. 265 for nine at Bristol. So still 180 behind. Glamorgan also battling to try and save the game against Sussex at Hove. 119 for one in their second innings. Still 239 runs behind. Barker in again over the wicket to Whiteman, who's defensively forward. Back down the pitch, Barker fields off his own bowling. And at New Road, where again almost certainly there will be a result today, uh, Worcestershire needing 271 to beat Leicestershire. Uh, 32 for two. And of course, the uh, the blast also starts today with a, a double header at um, at Edgbaston. The Derbyshire Falcons against Lancashire Lightning this afternoon. Then the Bears against the Vikings, Yorkshire Vikings tonight. Barker in again, bowling to Whiteman, who's playing that up to mid on, and there's no run. Also, South East Stars playing uh, the Blaze in the Charlotte Edwards Cup at um, Beckenham this afternoon, isn't it? So there's a lot of cricket being played today. And, of course, Limington against the Hampshire Academy over to our left. The big one. Keeping an eye on my club. Also playing today, of course, in the North Aperture League. So it almost feels as though the cricket season, as I say, is sort of properly started now. We've got the weather for it at last. Here's Barker running in again to bowl to North Aperture's acting captain, Sam Whiteman, who leaves that alone, goes through to Ben Brown. Whiteman... Coming into this match with 279 championship runs at average of just a shade under 35, which, as we were discussing yesterday, is just a little under his career first-class average, which is pushing 37 coming into this season. Out for noughts yesterday. LBW to Keith Barker, who is running in again to bowl to Whiteman, who again is very solidly forward, playing it, well, when I say straight down the pitch, it was straight down the pitch because it hit the stumps at the non-striker's end. End of the over, 51 for two, another maiden for Keith Barker with Keogh on nine, Whiteman on 25, the deficit still 260. Right, I've been doing some investigation during that over and just uh, on my last sign-off as head of tourism for Limington <laughs> uh, Town Council. Uh, Joe, thank you very much for your text. Uh, Pennington Marshes, uh, you sort of walk through there uh, past that sort of open air. I don't know if it's salt water, actually, the uh, swimming pool. Anyway, uh, it's an open air. So you walk through sort of, uh, there's, a, there's a very well-known walk, apparently, and then down to Keyhaven. Mm. Well, it's quite nice, yeah, it's a lovely walk. I've sort of seen parts of it without actually doing it. Yeah, lovely part of the world. Uh, here's Abbas over the wicket to Rob Keogh, and Keogh leaves that one alone. Outside of off stump. Yes, I was... Uh well, we were playing on the Isle of Wight last year. I was trying to work out the best place to stay. And staying on the island, I think, at that stage, was a, there wasn't an awful lot of accommodation around, obviously being the height of holiday season. So I thought it was probably best to stay close to the the ferry terminal. So uh, hence just staying in Limington. It's very nice. Very pleasant. That's a good ferry crossing. Yeah. From Yarmouth to Limington. Superb. Yarmouth's a good spot as well on the island. Uh, I, I'm becoming the southern region tourism officer. That's, uh, that's turned away by Keogh, down to fine legs, gone quite quickly. Picks up a single. The Northamptonshire total in their second innings following on. Uh, 52 for two, closing in on their first innings total. Well, it's funny, isn't it? You, th you think back over a, over a season, and obviously you know, we're hugely privileged and lucky to be travelling around the country and 
and watching and talking about cricket. But there's always one or two little, when you think back in the in the depths of winter, just little moments that, that stay with you from the previous year. And the one I mm. that sort of kept me warm during the winter was uh, travelling back on the, the ferry on a sort of flat, calm Solent back from Isle of Wight. Always wrapped on the pad there, Whiteman. Shout for LBW, but even on this angle, probably pitching outside Outside stump. left stump, I think, yeah. Just uh, pitch slightly across that one, Whiteman. It's kept a fraction low as well, but yeah, I think uh, might have been hitting, but it pitched outside that leg stump. Simon Young on the tweets at Sun Sport. All set for another day. He says the Kevin Jones stand. He keeps telling me about a Kevin Jones stand. I don't exactly know what it is. And he sent me a picture as well. It, doesn't look like a stand I know of. It looks like somebody's terrace in the back garden. <laughs> That's about as far as I'll get. Um, several ways to get in touch with us, of course, at Solent Sport, at Old Man Rad. Uh, Melissa's with us as well. There's a bit of extra bounce there as it's pushed out square on the offside. At Melissa G Story. And uh, email solentcricket at gmail.com. Yes, it was, uh, it was just heading back across the Solent. On, on just, <laughs> because it was a beautiful day, wasn't it? Very hot day when North Ampage played. Hampshire there last year at uh, the new close ground and just driving back with the sun starting to mm. starting to dip down and they say the Solent absolutely flat calm. It was yeah. beautiful. The best time to travel. Abbas into his ninth over here. Wicketless thus far. Comes in again and bowls to the left-handed Whiteman. Whiteman pushes forward. Pushes out on the onside. It was almost enough to make me forget about the result. <laughs> but that was the when hottest day ever, wasn't it? I it think. was. Well, it was. That day. Yeah, it was. It was. We were very, very um, toasty in our our tent, weren't oh, we? Our, our luxury hot. tent down there on the boundary. Well, we had the, came up with a bright idea of, of uh, opening up the, the tent flap at the back, just so mm. we had a little bit of bit of through draft, and and then it was suddenly like commentating in a wind tunnel. But. <laughs> We got there. Well, I remember people turning up with umbrellas, and I thought, yeah. well, they, do, they, do they know there's a shower of rain coming? Whiteman pushes that uh, up towards uh, mid-off. Slightly open the way he played that one. End of the over, 52 for two. One run uh, off that, but I think we later realised that people bought them as shades. Yes, that's right. Yeah, but it wasn't Because there's not a lot of shade on that ground, is no. there? In fact, there's, there's none, really, it's, uh, for spectators. But, uh, yeah, it was a match that, I mean, from North Africa's point of view, they really did throw away a, a golden opportunity to win that one, and it was one of those defeats that I think had quite a, a significance rather beyond just the one match. I think it, it, it dented confidence a bit, and uh, from being in a position where you thought that from the good chance of, uh, of qualifying, in the end, they didn't. Barker, round the wicket to Rob Keogh. And Keogh's in behind that, playing it up to mid-on, James Vince. Just wondered if that might creep through, but he got his arms up at first slip in anticipation, but Keogh got bat on it. For Rob Keogh, still the three slips in. Deep gully, almost a backward point. Big gap through the covers, then an extra cover. Mid on, short mid wicket. More orthodox mid wicket, bit squarer and a long leg. Here's Barker in bowling to Keogh. Back of a length, and Keogh's in behind that, playing it up to mid on, and there's no run. Uh, those of you on Sat Crawley watch, there are many, I know, because uh, he's probably one of the most talked about England uh, players. Yeah. He's out for 34 this morning. First thing, because he, he survived. Edge to second slip. Ooh, is, I've never seen that before. Um, he, <laughs> yes, he survived the, the carnage last night, didn't he, and was 31 not out, but uh, yeah. went first thing this morning. I think he made 19 in the first innings, mm. off the top of my head. Here's Barker. And again, bowling to Rob Keogh, and that did again keep a bit low. And Keogh, <laughs> having played it back down the pitch, is now looking at the toe end of his bat, somewhat ruefully. It's one of those that, if the bat isn't sprung particularly well, it, it jars the hands, and you finish up with that sort of, almost like sort of a buzz in your hands. It's not pleasant, <laughs> but uh, just might need a bit of tape on the bat on that one, a bit of glue. Here's Barker, and again bowling to Keogh, very solid, head over the ball, full defensive up to extra cover, and there's no run. Yeah, I like that full defensive. Play that all day long from a uh, Northamptonshire point of view. Oh yes, that would do nicely. Mm. I see uh, Kent have lost another one, they're six down now, and uh, 83 for six against Surrey at the Oval, so there's still a run behind. 
all over. So I think that one's uh, probably heading for a fairly early finish. Barker. In bowls outside the off stump and Keo almost an exaggerated leave. We were talking the first day about the different styles of leave and that was almost in the Peter Mills class of getting everything out of the road. Bat and gloves. Goes through to Ben Brown. So however Northamptonshire are thinking about playing this, if they're chunking it up into half an hour or so many overs, which I know a lot of players like to do. Alan Lamb was a great one for that. Here's Barker in again, and again, Keo absolutely rock solid forward defensive up to mid off, end of the over, 52 for two. Another maiden for Keith Barker, who's uh, eight overs, two maidens, one for 21. Not quite in the same category as his 12 overs, seven maidens, four for 13 yesterday, including five consecutive maidens at the start of his spell. But solid enough, 52 for two it is, Northamptonshire still 259 behind. I don't think we're going to see anything extravagant from the uh, Northamptonshire players uh, today. It might be quite a... Uh, not a day for entertainment. It might just be a day where you just try and work through the Northamptonshire uh, order. I mean, that 259 runs behind. I mean, we could theoretically, if North, even if Northamptonshire bat well, uh, they could might not even be in front no. by the end of day three. It'll all... It's all about Hampshire trying to take as many wickets as they can today and as quickly as they can outside the off stump left alone. Start of a new over from uh, Mohamed Abbas. Still trying to get used to uh, half of Hampshire's attack uh, not being around. No James Fuller, no Kyle Abbott. Um, it used to be the big three, but it's now very much the big four with uh, James Fuller. And to have half the attack ripped out, it, it's, I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, well, it, again, it was... It, one of the points that John Sadler was making last night is that you know, Hampshire bowled North Hampshire out yesterday without mm. two of their frontline bowlers. Mm -hmm. And haven't even used Crane yet as Abbas comes in, beaten outside the Ostamba half shout, getting a little excited. That kept a little low on Whiteman. Just as uh, Nottinghamshire routed Northamptonshire last, well, exactly a week ago, uh, without Luke Fletcher, who was mm. uh, was ruled out, obviously bowled a bit in the first innings, but, but clearly was struggling a bit with his ankle. And... Um, couldn't even take the field in the second innings and Dane Patterson who we we're all told doesn't like you doesn't like bowling with a new ball uh, picked up the first four wickets 11 for four thank you very much lovely I'd lo love to know what would happen if he did enjoy bowling with a new ball <laughs> get it out of his hands a bass to the left hander Whiteman Whiteman forward again it's accurate and again Whiteman just pushing it out on the offside got an email here from Laurie Clough Cricket at gmail.com. He says, after getting my nine-year-old son Ewan his first junior membership, I'm bringing him to his first county championship match today. We followed the Hawks all the way to Edgbaston last year, and after that he can't wait to see both the championship team and the Hawks uh, win at the Aegeus again. See, that's again, you see, T20 brings the fans in, gets them interested in other stuff. He's also playing in his first under-nines match. Oh, brilliant. To come to that in a moment as Abbas comes in and bowls to Whiteman, and Whiteman Again, gets a straight delivery and he pushes that up to mid-on. He's also playing his first under-9s match for Bishop's Waltham Cricket Club tomorrow morning and they're away at Botley. Uh, can I get a shout-out for my cricket mad son, Ewan, and the Bishop's Waltham under-9s? Uh, wishing them the best of luck for tomorrow. This is, uh, thank you. Uh, go get them, go get them, Ewan. Lovely. Here we go. Great stuff. Something to look forward to. Good weather tomorrow as well. You don't yeah, have to worry about so. that. Yeah. Well, my son's playing tomorrow, so I'm yep. not, not absolutely sure if I should be up there to watch it, but we'll see. Oh, you will. I'd be surprised. I'd, I'd, as well as Northamptonshire might bat, I still think you'll be all right tomorrow. <laughs> That's pushed out towards, I mean, it's a long time to bat a whole day when you've already lost two wickets the night before. Yeah, and it is. The batting is as fragile as Northamptonshire's in, is. But, as I say, just take it deep into day three. That's, I guess that's something, isn't it, really? They might, they might go into day four. Looks a good pitch at the moment. It does. It will be interesting if, you know, without wishing to get too far ahead, if these two were able to just blunt the initial onslaught, whether, you know, whether we do see a bit of Mason Crane, but very interesting to see how he bowls. Because I thought Alex Russell, you know, given his obviously first class debut and the rest of it, young and inexperienced, but I thought he bowled pretty well. Yes. Over, over, you know, over the whole 14 overs, as he said himself, there are a few poor balls in there, but you expect that. Here's a bass. It's Whiteman just pushes that into the gap on the next side. There are two players out on the boundary there now. So just Barker, the one man saving the single, couldn't on that occasion. Whiteman 
Moves on to 26 and Northamptonshire following on 53 for two, still 258 runs behind. Yeah, it's great when you play your, your first competitive match, isn't it? And uh, we've got a new uh, sort of young team for young girls in our uh, our club, and they had their first tournament a couple of weeks ago. Managed to win all their games and mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed it, I'm told. So that's what it's all about. And uh, well, obviously uh, all over the country. I don't know whether anywhere else or indeed most other leagues start quite as early as ours does. I was just having at my club's first team have already started in the North Amateur League Prem start at 11 o'clock which is a fairly early start but the, most of the players seem to enjoy that but uh, we were always told for years you can't start at 11 o'clock because everybody has to work on a Saturday morning but I don't think probably as many do now and the consensus is that they'd rather have start of an early start and finish a bit earlier and leave the rest of the evening to do whatever they want to do anyway we have a first bowling change of the morning so that's, that's a little feather in the cap for these two batters. Ian Holland is coming into the attack to replace Keith Barker from the pavilion end, far end, two slips in place. He's bowling round the wicket to the left-handed Whiteman and Whiteman is across his stumps, nudging it down towards fine leg. Chase for Mohamed Abbas who reels it in just inside the rope and they come back for a couple of runs, so it takes Sam Whiteman up to 28 and Northamptonshire to 55 for two. Yeah, it's a, sorry. No, go on. No, I was just going to say, it's a quick old change, isn't it? Because uh, Barker didn't seem to do a lot wrong. Three no. overs, two maidens, one for none. Well, unless they're going to swap him bowling from this end or mm. something. I, well, we'll see. The field is an interesting one for Whiteman. So two slips in. They've got this sh short mid-wicket in. It's almost a catching position. Outside the off-stump, Whiteman leaves alone. They've got a a fairly short straight mid-wicket man just in front of square and a mid-on Mohamed Abbas down there at uh, long leg and a mid-off, extra cover and a man on the backward point boundary almost in front of the tunnel so we'll be able to have a little glance through and see how Gareth Berg's getting on <laughs> on the next ground it's a bit early oh, yeah, it is a bit. he's an hour early Here's Holland in outside the off stump, left alone by Sam Whiteman. Yes, you, I think we established it at 12.30 12 start. 12.30 start, yeah, yeah, 50 overs aside, Southern League game. Yeah, it's, um, it is interesting, isn't it? I, mean, I, th I can think to remember when I, when I first started in, in, in league cricket, it, was, it tended to be a two o'clock start, I think. Mm. But, um, I think I did, yeah. But now, they, now it's, a, well, certainly in Northamptonshire, it's, it's 11 in the, in the top division. I think most of the start at 12. Here's Holland in again, bowls on leg stump and Whiteman looking to try and play it on the onside. Don't think he got any bat on there. No, it wasn't to leg by. It rolls just behind square and they come through for a leg by. One more on the total, 56 for two. Northamptonshire trailing by 255. Maybe at the end of this over, I think uh, Melissa will be joining Kevin. A high-powered team for you today. Cool, thanks. great expense <laughs> field changes over for the right-handed Keo, and still the two slips in as Holland over the wicket in bowling outside the off stump and Rob Keo leaves well alone Keo made a very very good hundred in the first game of the season when Northamptonshire really needed somebody to, to dig in and made 116 not out which was his 15th First class century for Northamptonshire and puts him level in the all time list with David Capel, which I know he was very proud about because it was David Capel that actually gave him his first team debut over a decade ago. The original one club man, Rob Keogh. Here's Holland in again, bowling to him and Keogh playing that up to mid off. No run and the end of the over. 56 for two. Keogh is 10, Whiteman is 28. And uh, joining Kevin James. It will be Melissa Story. I'll be back with you later. Slow going this morning. Northamptonshire have added just six runs in the half an hour's play this morning, but it's probably not so much about Northamptonshire scoring quickly. It's about preserving as many of those eight wickets as they can today. And, uh, of course, the longer that they preserve all of them, or most of them, then uh, I guess the Northamptonshire camp will be a little... Uh, 
bit more relaxed, but uh, they've got a few problems. There is uh, no doubt about that. Sit bottom of the table. And uh, they have been uh, well under the cosh since the first morning of this game. Here's a bass. Forward is Whiteman. Almost on the second bounce through to Ben Brown. And Welcome, Melissa. Hello. Good to see you. First time here for the game. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm got quite used to doing days one and two. Mm. But I've, I, I have been hooked on this game, actually. I've been doing a bit of university work and following on the live stream. And it's been a pretty entertaining game so far from a Hampshire perspective. It's moved forward very quickly. Yes, I was getting a little worried about my days three and four commentary. I think day four was slowly slipping away from me. But there's still hope. There's still hope. It was going in the distance. That's bounced a bit on Whiteman, but he manages to turn it square on the leg side for a single. He deals a lot in singles, Whiteman, just angling the bats and just pushing and nudging into the where there is a gap and no fielder and just quietly accumulating. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed these two this morning already because the weather's a lot better. Obviously, today, these next two days are meant to be really sunny and warm. And yesterday, there was that bit of rain around. And I, I think it was much more suitable conditions for bowling yesterday. The ball hasn't done as much this morning. We've seen hardly any swing. And the Northamptonshire batters are using their feet. They're coming down the pitch already. And I, I like it because it, it's, it's counter-attacking in a modest way. Yeah. Very true. As a bass comes in, short one, and Keo pulls that around behind square on the leg side. John Turner is up there. They're going to pick two. That's running. So positive defensive play and positive running. Yeah, they're, they're, they're picking off these singles, and usually you see batters stand outside the crease when they're trying to negate some swing and when, it, when it's proving to be difficult. But they're actually standing outside their crease and coming down further. And there's been good carry, I think, on this pitch from what we've seen this morning as well. So it's not like it's a dangerous one where you're going to come down and then get done by a P-roller. But they can just watch the ball through to the keeper. It's, it's good. I, I think it's positive intent from a team who are in a pretty ghastly situation. It's, it's the least you can do. A pass again to Keo. There's another short one. And Keo tries to pull that one. I think it came off the bottom edge and it bounced again through to Brown. I'm not sure, really. The ball certainly didn't come off the pitch very quickly. It's uh, an ugly looking pull shot there from Keo outside the off stump. Did it come off the bat at all? No. I, I think he was quite a, a way off, but it? it would have been an interesting shot to play because, as you say, it was wide outside the off stump and he was looking to pull it more square. I feel if he had been targeting over the head of, of mid on or mid wicket more and gone for a straight pull, then there may have been more of a chance whether a, a, a shot like that was necessary. I, I'm unsure, but we can just see square leg pushed back now to. It was three quarters of the way to the boundary, so we might see another shorter delivery. Certainly a risky shot when it's that far outside off stump. Here's uh, Abbas again, length ball. Keo pushes that up towards uh, mid on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, th th there's good movement of the feet from Keo, that's for sure. Whiteman's a little bit more sort of steady, isn't he? And just lets the ball come on a fraction more. Sort of Keo even coming forward is attacking the ball a little bit, even defensively. But everybody has a slightly different technique in the way they want to play. And uh, as long as it uh, keeps the bowlers at bay, it works. Because that's the name of the game for Northamptonshire, even though it's slow going. Just nine runs added this morning so far as Abbas comes in again and bowls. There's a good stride there from Keo as he pushes that up to Barker at mid-off. End of the over. And I was slightly disappointed with some of the Northamptonshire dismissals in their first innings. We were speaking before today's play about the few wickets I did I did manage to catch. One which stood out was, was Sales's wicket where he was bold and looked like halfway through it through playing the shot he just was like, Oh, that's it, I'm done. And it was just a normal delivery. It didn't do anything, but he got clean bold and it, it felt a bit defeat defeatist in ways and it, it felt like a lot of the players, you know, did get themselves out. It was difficult playing conditions, but we've seen a lot trickier conditions so far this year. As we say, this has been only slightly rain affected this game so far compared to some of the earlier rounds where the ball was hooping around sideways. As Ian Holland continues over the wicket, late cut down towards the fielder at backward point for a single by Whiteman. He picks up a single, score moves on to 60 for two. Yeah, Whiteman reminds me of somebody at the crease, and I'm just trying to think. Another Aussie left-hander, Test player. I'm just trying to think. What, what era um, are we speaking? Well, who's or? the guy? Um, I should know this. Who's the guy that um, was at Somerset, left-hander, Aussie, and um, and managed their side up until recently? 
Oh, I, should, uh, I should know this. I know, I should know. No, the, the names um, slip me. And even Andrew Rad can't remember. Uh, it is such an obvious name that uh, we'll remember in a minute. Holland over the wicket, full thick edge, beats the diving point fielder, racing down to the deep third boundary. Fielder in pursuit, can't make it. And just one of the first few shots we've really seen. That intent, yes, it was slightly played on the up, but had enough momentum to carry it away to the boundary. Score moves on to 64 for two. See, because this is the over where I'm doing the ball by ball, it means that you're my cue. You know, in James Bond, where he's, he's the guy in the chair, we can take it in turns when suddenly you're viciously typing in the corner going, oh, we need to work out who this Australian left-handed batter is. And I'm, I'm really quite frustrated. I, I don't know who you're talking about. Has a little nibble at that one. That's Keo. It was back of a length. And he just rehearses the leave he should have played. You, you know who I'm talking about when I say Q, right? Uh, I know. Uh, I yes, I do. Uh, Q. And, 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 and that's an interesting analogy because I've never thought of that before. But that's, that's interesting, yeah. He's one of my favourite characters because oh, the right. current Q is Ben Wishaw, who also plays Paddington Bear, who is one of my favourite bears of all the bears. So <laughs> beats the Birmingham Bears, to tell you what. Oh, gosh, why can't I remember that name? Holland straying onto the pads of Keo, who gets on top of the bounce and just tickles it down to fine leg for a comfortable single. 65 for two, you've got it? Well, I've got uh, 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 Liam Dawson's dad, Andy Dawson, has just texted me. Justin Langer. Oh, oh, I was, I was thinking a lot more recently then, so I'm not sure I would have. Oh, sorry, are you too young? Yeah, uh, thanks, Andy. Yeah, Justin Langer. I know. Obviously, when I say that, you won't really know that. Holland bowls around the wicket this time and left alone by Whiteman. <laughs> uh, see, every time I, I'm from the kind of experience of Justin Langer as a coach for right. for a lot of it, and obviously the Australian Test team have their behind the scenes documentaries and he, he's he's a funny character I have so many clips of that show saved to kind of use as jokes and memes with my friends because he's such a funny coach mm, interesting right quick 30 second uh, update as Ian Holland comes in yeah just over half an hour's play uh, this morning the uh, object or the, uh, the the task for Hampshire is to pick up these last eight of Northamptonshire second in his wickets and uh, get the game wrapped up with a day to spare that so far though they haven't taken any uh, but it's slow progress for the visitors they are 66 for two having started at 50 uh, for two uh, Sam Whiteman is 31 not out and Rob Keogh 16 not out showing some fight that perhaps Northamptonshire well they didn't show in the first innings and probably haven't shown uh, for quite a bit during the season that's why they're bottom of division one 66 for two then Hampshire still need another eight wickets they're North Hampshire 245 runs behind. Yeah, Justin Langer. I suppose I, I, I forget really because um, a bit like when uh, Emily's on as well, that if I mention some names, then you think, oh, who did they play? Well, I watched him in the 2005 Ashes, but on oh, the right. box set. Oh, right. So it's him okay, and right. Matthew Hayden, wasn't it? Yeah. So you have seen him play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, now, I, I did love that opening combination. I yeah. think when I was younger, I could have named you know, every Australian player and okay. from that series. But I haven't watched it in a while. I don't have no, as much so. free time as when I was 10. No. So you haven't studied um, Justin Langer's sort of technique and said, do you know what, Kev, you are so right. Sam Whiteman does remind me of Justin Langer. No, but I'll say it anyway. You're so right. <laughs> that makes me feel so much better. Thank you very much. As Whiteman pushes forward, and that's gone out <laughs> behind square on the offside. And he moves on to 32 now. Hello, Justin Logan. Uh, 67 for two means that Northamptonshire are still behind by 244. You mentioned Matthew, Matthew Hayden. Oh, you're right. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Matthew Hayden, and um, I batted several times with him. You did? Yeah, yeah. When he played at Hampshire. What was he like as a person? Because he always struck me as a, a person who, like, animals would love him. He just looked so kind. I feel like when he w if he sang, like, it'd be like Snow White, little yeah. bunny rabbits would come and birds would swing around his head. I kind actually, face. Yes, yeah. Uh, his uh, bark, I'll come back to that moment. So he's wrapped on the pads, so up Keo, not quite out, not quite out. That came back. It did come back, and I think it came back too much of uh, those of the listeners following on the live stream. I mean, yeah, I think it was probably just missing the top of leg stump. Yeah, Matthew Hayden, I really grew to like a lot, and I love batting with him. 
and he was a really good guy in the change rooms you know just a really good sort of guy to have around superb yeah loved it loved, loved, loved batting with him here's uh, Barker around the wicket runs away from us this is his second spell this morning Keogh's on the back foot and steers that up to mid off Andy Dawson's texting me back saying after all after mentioning that can you give me a job I think uh, I think Andy you have to work a bit harder than that that's a good job. Just supplying me with a name doesn't doesn't get you a job, does it? If you get five in a day, then maybe we'll consider it. But you'll have to send your CV in as well. <laughs> Who were some of the your favourite overseas players you played with? At Hampshire. At Hampshire or, or other counties as well. Uh, when I joined Middlesex, uh, oh gosh, I mean you would not know. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you who played for half a season. Jeff Thompson. That doesn't ring any bells. I tell you what, that, that would that strikes fear. Whenever you mention that name, that's pushed up to mid on and there's no run. Uh, he had a slingy action. And when he came on the scene with Dennis Lilly, uh, I remember sort of, you know, as a youngster watching these guys bowl. And I thought, if this is pro cricket, my word, I'm in for a hard time here. Well, he had one hell of a haircut. Yeah, he, did. He's nice. he was a good guy as well. He came and joined Middlesex. He was going to play a whole season in the early 80s, but he got a hernia and had to go home. But at the time he joined Middlesex, honestly, seriously, if you ever see some YouTube footage of him bowling, scary bowler, scary bowler. That's pushed back to the bowler. Just and there's like no yourself then. Well, very similar. Uh, he was probably the scariest bowler to arrive on the scene at that time. And so obviously played for Middlesex. What was yeah. the pitch like then? Because I know... Nowadays, that especially because I, I cover a lot more of the white ball game, there it gets criticisms that it can be a bit slow and low. You know, mm. when you played and, and, and when Jeff so, was playing, yeah. was it similar or did it, it was give pretty a bit much, more? Yeah, it was. There was not a lot there. Another guy called Wayne Daniels, a West Indian who didn't really play much for West Indies, but he was quick. When they bowled in tandem, <laughs> that was uh, great to watch. That's outside the off stump and uh, left alone. So I remember that. That was good fun. Uh, there was another South African called Vincent van der Baal, who was a tall South African seamer at the time, who was a very, very good bowler. They always seem to be getting seamers in in the teams you're playing. They don't, well, that was they the don't era. back you very much. No, that was the era. Just quick bowlers. You know, it was it, the quicker the better. All teams got the quickest bowlers they could find in, and, and you just used to get bounced the crap out of, basically. Which is <laughs> interesting, because when you look at a lot of the overseas chosen nowadays, particularly in the white ball competitions, you tend to see the big batters get drafted and actually more teams backing their domestic bowlers and it is quite similar in the women's game that the batters go for the for the big bucks and it, i guess there was more kind of star studded bowlers mm. back then as that one's left yes, alone was, yeah. by whiteman through to the keeper i think there was more quick bowlers around then it's just it goes in phases you know, so there was around then, and then you're in a different generation where there's probably more batters, and then, as you say, so I mean, there is overseas players now playing in this Charlotte Edwards Cup, isn't there? Yeah, there's some. It, it's really the, the, we've seen a bit of an influx this year with Donovan Nierkirk going to be playing for the the Sunrisers, who was the uh, last South African captain. Her kind of leaving the team was shrouded in a bit of controversy um, mm. but she's a fantastic player for the Sunrisers to sign defended that time by Whiteman back to the bowler Erin Burns is playing for the Sparks Australian player um, oh who else have we got I should know this Dottin Dottin she's obviously retired from international cricket now but she's playing for Thunder the whole season we've got Nadine de Klerk is playing for the Blaze and she got seven wickets for about 20 odd runs in, in one of her first games, so she's certainly made an impact already. As Holland around the wicket bowls and looking to work that one to the onside was Whiteman just playing in front of his pad just a little bit, which made the two Hampshire slips. James Vince and Joe Weverly just exclaim a, a bit there. I mean, yeah, it's brilliant to see because, you know, the players who are coming over. A lot of them are towards the later stages of their careers, so they bring a lot of experience with them. And the likes of Dottin van Nierkirk, you know, they've recently retired as well. So they were big losses when they retired internationally. As Holland's bowling strikes on the pad, big appeal from the slips, no interest from the umpire as the ball runs down to fine leg, allows the Northamptonshire batters to get back for a single, and the score moves on to... 67 for two because there's, there's a lot of issues in the women's game for people who aren't too familiar about it about 
you know, similar to the men's, you can earn a lot more in leagues than you play, than you would for your, for your playing for your country. But also the lack of fixtures, you know, dotting for the West Indies was being paid hardly anything and also only playing a, a smattering of international games. So for her to come over here and play for the Thunder, she's probably playing more games this summer than she did the last few years for the West Indies. Driving through the gap, beautiful shot from Keo. Fielder in pursuit, but the ball trickles over the boundary rope. That was a glorious strike. A bit over-pitched from Holland. He leant into it nicely. Beautifully pierced that gap and moves the score into 72 for two. But we, we've been seeing a few, you know, overseas now and again for a while because I got to play with Susie Bates when she used to play for Hampshire. She's the New Zealand cricketer for Anyone who isn't familiar, one of the greats of the game as Fuller, but this time driven to mid-off. Can't beat the fielder and completes the over. 72 for two, the score. She was brilliant. And at one stage we had her and Charlotte Edwards playing for, for Hampshire. And I was very comfortably the drinks carrier, but it was an honor to carry Susie Bates drink for her. <laughs> and her certain banana, she, she would say, if I get to this many overs, I want a third of a banana run out. And if I get to the 10 over mark, I'll have another half. And it was almost like... Really? I, I know Peter Siddle's quite into his bananas as well, but I've never had to, like, look at one and go, what is a third of this? And cut and it And I up. need to run this out at, yeah, seven overs. Wow. What happens if it's a small banana as opposed to a big one? Because obviously bananas come in different sizes. This is what I was thinking, because, you know, you can get the ones which you get in Sri Lanka and stuff, which are tiny. Surely you'd need a whole one of those. Uh, Barker's over the wicket to Whiteman, who pushes forward. Again, it's one of his trademark a la um, Justin Langer style <laughs> pushes out on the uh, offside, which Melissa well, doesn't know. If Hampshire get start to get some wickets today, yes. and if it is over by today, then I can go home tomorrow and watch the 2005 box set again. Yeah, if it pushes out on the offside. I don't think there'll be too many defensive shots in that box set. There'll probably be wickets and fours and... All sorts of stuff. There'll be too many defensive pushes, I shouldn't think, in amongst that. I don't know. It's not it's not ball by ball box set, is no, it? Gosh. No, I was gonna say. Barker's got three slips as he bowls to Whiteman, who prods forward again and will take an easy single because Gubbins is fairly deep at uh, mid off seventy three for two. But I bet there is a market for the box set for the people who prefer the the Mark Churches of the world who prefer to see the defensive shots and the little awkward prod into yeah. the covers for a single. So some people can have the highlights package, but others mm. might go, actually, no, I'd like to see the one where he leaves five balls in a row and then steals a single at the end of the over. Yeah. Proper cricket. Alternative box set. Yes. The, the, the behind the scenes. Yeah. The defensive shots. Here's uh, Barker and Keo's in behind that one, pushes that out to middle. I think, that would, I, think that's, I think there's a market for that. You see, what is the point? In watching a box set of the 2005 Ashes series, seeing everybody go bang, 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 bang. And then uh, you think, God, every ball was exciting. Whereas actually you could bring out an alternative box set where there's not a run scored. Well, one of my favourite tests ever played was the 2009 Ashes test at Cardiff. And that is one of the only box sets where obviously they are including every single defensive shot from, from Jimmy Anderson and Monty Panesar. Of course, very famous last wicket stand, wasn't it? Outside the off stump to Keo, who leaves that one uh, alone. How long did they, they last? Quite a while, didn't they? A very long time. And I used to laugh my head off as a kid watching. Because it must have been one of the first kind of series I, I remember watching live as it was going on. But I used to love the time-wasting tactics. Because usually, if it wasn't England and if it wasn't that situation, I'd be going, come on, get on with the game. But every time, uh, you know, the, the 12th man would run on another pair of gloves, I was like, go on, you've got this. Waste some more time. <laughs> That is Barker around the wicket to Keo. Keo drives, lovely shot into the gap in the covers. That'll be four. Good stride there from Rob Keo. No doubt about that. And he moves on to 24, 77 for two. If you actually did bring out that alternative box set, say it was you that did it, you could actually, you could actually say, do you know what? Here's my version of the 2005 Ashes, wasn't it a boring series? Yeah. Because if you picked out all the defensive, series, it, it, the defensive shots and somebody watched that and think, all I've heard about is how great that 2005 series is, and yet I've just watched this box set, and it looks the most boring series ever. And everyone's saying this summer is going to be the most hype for the Ashes since, t test since 2005, but from what I've seen, it was absolute <laughs> rubbish. 
A lot of blokes holding their bats up in the air. <laughs> it's Parker. Staying round the wicket. To Kyoko again. Gets a good stride in as he punches that up towards the mid-off. We're... Gubbins Fields. So, no luck for Hampshire so far this morning. We've had 50 minutes of play where Northamptonshire started at 50 for two following on. They've moved on to 77 for two. Cautious batting, but he's exactly what Northamptonshire need. They want a bit of confidence. They want to show a bit of fight. And they're doing that this morning through Keogh and Whiteman. They're 234 runs behind. Whiteman, from his overnight title, a total of 25, has moved on to 34. And Keogh, from eight overnight, is now 24 not out. It's just been incredibly positive cricket from Northamptonshire and it was exactly what they, they said, you know, their coach admitted after the game it wasn't just going to have to be a hard-fought 20 overs, it's going to be a, a, a hard-fought two days and I, I'm excited that Liam Dawson's being brought into the attack here because this, the Hampshire bowlers weren't doing anything wrong necessarily, a, a few in the last two overs which have been slightly over-pitched and of course that they, they are missing Abbott and Fuller and Fuller in particular has been kind of that golden arm bowler for them this year who's been able to come in and bowl just that little bit quicker than the other bowlers and, and force the breakthrough. Here they don't have you know Fuller as an option so see what this pitch, how it responds to Liam Dawson and then let's bring Mason Crane in because the Northamptonshire leg spinner did a really good job. Yes. We saw some turn and also get his arm warmed up for the T20 blast. Because yep. if people weren't aware, we are the reigning champions. <laughs> oh, so yes. We were there. So Liam Dawson then from the pavilion end. Field is surrounding the batters, beating the edge first delivery. We've got a slip, a short leg. Is that called a short extra cover? I don't, that's not, that's a bit wishy. Silly mid off? Yeah, I guess that's it. Is it ish? Like it could be either. He's close up and he's on the offside. I'll say that. <laughs> Dawson bowls flatter and driven past. That fielder close up on the offside, out to the deep cover fielder who's very square, a single's taken. 78 for two, the score. and. One of those ones where the fielder had to jump out of the way and try and get his heels out the way of the, the ball's trajectory unless he wanted the big bruise. Change of field for the right-hander. Just the slip and the short leg. Two fielders on the boundary at deep cover. And it's edged. Falls just short of James Vince. Or did it carry? He's lying on the ground and hasn't quite got up yet, which may just suggest... It was a chance, although my, my first instincts, it, it did carry. Did it? It, it's hit him Ooh. on that area of the wrist. And it, it came quick. It was a quicker delivery from Dawson. Thick edge. And he's in again, targeting the stumps this time. It's just straighter, worked out to deep mid wicket with not much pace on the ball, allowing the fielder to run round and scoop it up for a single 79 for two. Difficult chance though, wasn't it? I mean, the fact he got his hand down there, yeah. I think, was a was a credit to James Vince as a slip fielder. He's one of the best in the game. I do just like here that there's that extra fielder around the bat for the left hander. It's edged past Vince this time. There's no one down at deep third, so it'll be a boundary for Northamptonshire. Moves the score to 80 three for two and brings up the 50 run partnership between Sam Whiteman and Rob Keogh. 53 runs, 135 balls. So it's showing just how hard they've had to work in this partnership. And from the way this first Liam Dawson over of the day is going, it looks like it's going to be a tricky old day with the spinners. It's just the odd one that turns, doesn't it? Just fractionally. Dawson's bowling into the rough to Whiteman. Dawson in again, flatter, cut off the back foot, out towards the deep cover boundary. And that fielder who's sweeping out there is more of a backward point. So they run round, collect a single, score moves on to 85 for two. And that deficit, 226. Um, Neil has uh, emailed uh, sterlingcricket at gmail.com 
it's the same deal of Explorer Coffees Limited. I've given them so much of a, um, a platform. I shouldn't do that. Other coffee companies available. Have they sent you coffee yet? Not yet. No, I'm oh, waiting. That's a hint. Yeah. Well, we have got coffee here, but I'm sure it could be. Imp- well, it can't be improved. It's very nice. Um, Neil is actually uh, on the roof terrace here. He says, interesting uh, opening. He says, not much in the, the way of chances. Well, we've just had sort of a half chance there, but he's right. There's not much really for the Hampshire bowlers to really get stuck into, but not much scoring either. Now, it's all pretty slow at the moment as Keogh pushes forward. Northamptonshire won't mind uh, that. It's a bit pensive amongst the members, uh, he says. He says, sadly, he can't tune in, though, as he forgot his headphones. Uh, I hope you say, I'm reading it out, and he won't know whether I've read it out or not, but... We have. A bit pensive amongst the members, eh? See, I don't think they need to worry too much at this stage, the uh, home fans. I mean, even if Northampton should get in front, it'll be a hell of an effort. But we are particularly pessimistic fans, aren't we? We've yes. literally got the lead of 226, and we're like, oh, not yeah. great. Even if it was 426, it's like, it's OK. That's a push back to the bowler. And there is uh, no run. Uh, I forgot to say, um, you're actually a, a T20 county winner as well. I should say that to add to your list of things. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. It, was a, it was a good day out. Um, luckily, our T20 group were uh, one of few groups who didn't have a men's game happening at the, the local list day grounds. We got to play at the county ground in Gloucestershire. I know Hampshire, Sussex, they played at Hove. Yep. All the Southwest teams played at Taunton, which is brilliant to see. Here's uh, Barker again. Keo, again, very purposeful in his defence as he pushes that up to uh, Benon. Yep, so Gloucestershire won their group. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Beat Dorset in the semi final. Watched a thrilling game between Shropshire and Wiltshire, and then went into the final to, to battle with Shropshire and came out on top. So it was a, a good day all round. And Pretty cool experience to, to, you know, play at the county ground. It was being live streamed as well. I got to open the bowling in the mm. semi-final and my hands were shaking like anything. Really? Wow. Parker bowls and Kyo again. Look at that forward defensive. So that's pushed up to a bit off. So you were back bowling after your um, session with Emily Windsor and the physio. She got you back bowling? Yeah, she's cured me. Yeah. Um, I say that as my shoulder's a little bit sore again, but I have been playing a lot of cricket in this last week so I'm going to stick to her recommended stretches because they worked an absolute treat and her her medications she recommended mm. I'd certainly recommend her if anyone's <laughs> looking for a physio cheap as well but I don't think she'd be as cheap now if she's qualified <laughs> right, qualified in the last couple of weeks oh and he's beaten outside the off stump I think he's just about playing at that one slightly wider and it was going further away Keo just drawn into that defensive shot but uh, not much really for the Hampshire bowlers here to get too excited, it's the sun's out, there's hardly a cloud in the sky, dry pitch. We're going to have to work hard here. We're sure we're going to see a lot more of Liam Dawson. And I guess even if we just get a glimpse of Mason Crane today, it'll be a bonus. But I think he might have a bit of bowling to do as long as he can get it right and bowl nicely. I'm told by several people that he's bowling OK this year, which uh, is always good news. Here's uh, Barker Bowles down the leg side. Good carry through to... Ben Brown, that's the end of the over. Barker's got through 11 overs now, one for 27. That was a maiden over from him. And uh, Northamptonshire, who are following on, are 85 for two, having started the day, 50 for two. Yeah, and as we said, there's nothing particularly wrong with what the Hampshire bowlers have been doing. You know, it's just been... A good partnership so far between these two, pretty risk free at the moment. Yep. And things feel quite in the balance. You have these periods here at, at the Aegeus Bowl where things just kind of just slow down a bit and time moves very, very slowly. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, three wickets will fall and things descend into mayhem. And you can see the pads and helmets and gloves flying about the changing room. As it's like retiring to the country watching some cricket here at times, isn't it? Slower pace of life. Dawson bowls over the wicket and defended right down by the feet of Whiteman for no run. Speaking of, so I went to a pub the other day in Bristol with my friends. And bear in mind, this is, you know, pretty pretty central Bristol, so you're expecting a kind of city vibe. Mm. As Dawson's bowling, looking to sweep, struck on the pad, but well outside the line was Whiteman. He made sure to 
get out of that LBW danger zone. But yeah, so it was it was in the centre, well, in, in the city, let's say at least, and it felt like I was in a village pub. There was a folk band playing violins, fiddles, flutes in the corner with no sheet music or anything. They would just assemble and start playing a song out of nowhere. It was insanely strange. Has sure. driven through the gap. This should go for four. No Hampshire fielder is in pursuit. Overpitched by Dawson. Mightman now, who moves on to 45. Gets so much closer to that half century. Score moves on to 89 for two. But it, but it was really remarkable, the kind of atmosphere in here. It was the wooden beams, the old fashioned decor, and yeah, just a live folk band defending this time as Whiteman straight back to Dawson for I, no run. I take it you didn't know that before you arrived. I, I knew that it, there was meant to be some kind of live music, but it, it genuinely felt like I was kind of in the local tavern in a Jane Austen film. It was wonderful. I was completely captured by them. I'm going to be going back. Coming down the pitch and bowls in, stump out of the ground. Whiteman, so close to his half century. Looks to charge down the wicket to Dawson. Ball just sneaks down. Actually, he didn't even come down that far. It was a big stride forward, which gave the, the perception that he'd almost attacked Dawson a little bit more. But actually, it was that big gap between bat and ball. It was an expansive looking shot. Left the gap wide open and Dawson snuck through. The first wicket of the morning falls. Whiteman goes for 45 off 93 balls. Oh, listen, first and foremost, that's great bowling. It's pitched in the rough. But if I'm honest, what is Whiteman doing? You cannot be driving at balls that are not pitched. You've got to be really, cl you know, you've got, listen, as a left-hander, you've always got a bit more rough. As you get into day three, uh, as we are now, there's always a bit of rough outside of your off stump. And a left arm over is pitching in the rough more often than not. So you have got to be really tight and you've got to pick the right balls to be driving. He's coming forward there and trying to drive a ball that's pitching well in front of him, and he's trying to play through that. You know, that, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm sorry, he's a good player, this guy, but that's a mistake for him. You cannot be driving at balls. It has to be really close to you, and he'd been doing it before that. He'd hit a couple through the offside that were very full, and they have to be very full at this stage of a game when the left arm is doing that. When you, when you start driving at balls that are pitching a good two feet or so in front of you, a foot in front of you, watch the live picture feed there. He's driving at a ball. Should never be. If it's a flat pitch, yeah, you know, you can hit the spinners on the up because you know it's not deviating off the straight. But again, he's, le he's left himself wide open there. And it's pitched exactly in that big patch of rough there. Mm. You know, and you were saying, you know, he was he was demonstrating this Justin Langer kind of technique and he looked so solid this morning and that just lapse of judgment there, you know. We mentioned this has been a big it had been a big partnership between those two and they'd been fighting really hard, but all it takes is just one second and a a false shot to play and suddenly yeah. this might just be the moment I was saying we were having a slower moment. Is this Hampshire's opportunity now to sneak in a, a few wickets? You know, they'll want to finish this game today. They need seven more wickets now today. They've got Liam Dawson as a spin option. He seems up for it. And you've got Mason Crane, you know, yeah. both of them bowling into into a quite a lot of rough on this pitch. It, it, it's been quite dry apart from the rain yesterday. Yeah. So interesting period of play coming, I suspect. And of course, having a few left handers in the side as well doesn't exactly help with Dawson coming over the wicket. Dawson then to the new batter. I was going to say, that's who's pushing into the offside. Straight to Keith Barker at extra cover. And it's no run. 89 for three then. Liam Dawson with the wicket of Whiteman in that over for 45. Melissa Story is going to stay on. And uh, she's going to uh, be joined uh, in a moment by uh, Andrew Redd from BBC uh, Northampton who uh, I guess would have been fairly happy with that first hour and then just as you start feeling a bit happy again, it comes back to bite you. The hope that kills you, isn't it, as they always say. Yeah, disappointing from uh, Northampton's point of view. And I mean, just watched that a, a few times at the, the back of the box on the on the replay. Yeah, it was a, just a momentary lapse of judgment, concentration, whatever. But uh, it's cost Sam Whiteman is wicked and now Northampton got to start again and build a partnership between these two experienced batters at the 
top of the order. Here is Barker around the wicket bowling to Keogh, who's pushing that up to mid-off and there's no run. Afternoon, Melissa. Hello, brothers. Good to see you. And uh, yeah, Solid first hour for Northamptonshire, but we did say early on that we thought that well, maybe Mason Crane, Liam Dawson will have a bit more work to do in this innings than they did in the first innings, and uh, that certainly seems to be the the case there. And Liam Dawson getting that very important breakthrough for, for Hampshire on an absolutely glorious afternoon here at uh, the Aegeus Bowl. My goodness, we've missed this, haven't we? A bit of cricket weather. Barker in, bowling to Keogh, who's again pushing it back down the pitch. Just misses the stumps at the non-striker's end and rolls up to mid-on. I did love your discussion about the uh, the box set and the just putting a whole a whole string of, of blocking. I mean, you know, Brigadier Block, fantastic. I mean, my first ever county championship game I covered was Hampshire Surrey, where Hashim Amla, I think, oh, got 20-odd, yes. 30-odd runs of 200-something yes, deliveries. Right, yeah. And, yeah, as I say, Mark Church loved it. Yes. And I was going, oh, my <laughs> goodness, how are you meant to commentate on this? Yeah, I think Mark and I would be as one on this. It's the uh, next ball from Barker is finds Keo just coming across his stumps and plays it up to mid-wicket and there's no run. I mean, I, when I first started watching Northamptonshire back in the early 70s, of course, we had uh, a player I'm sure you'll have heard of, if not actually seen David Steele, who was BBC Sports Personality of the Year in 1975 for his efforts against Jeff Thompson and Dennis Lilly, who you were also talking about a bit earlier with uh, with Kevin. And uh, David had a great forward lunge. And I, I, I was brought up on that sort of mother's milk. Marvellous. Watch that all day. Here's Barker. Round the wicket again, bowling to Keogh, who's, well, in steel mode. Pushing that up to mid-off and there's no run. Who have been some of your, your favourite players or batters to watch over the years? I love, well, I mean, I, I, I think it's it's always the case, isn't it, that the ones that, that you see early on in your, you know, in your cricket watching life are those that perhaps the memories are the most vivid and you, they, they you know, that sort of lasting affection and oh, DS Steele was, was a great one for me. I loved watching him bat and... Uh, I mean, a great craftsman of the game. I was lucky enough to write a book with him a few years ago. And as a player of spin, I'll tell you about one of the great contests in a minute. This Barker is in bowls to Keogh's. There's a little bit of shape in there from Barker, as is often the case. And Keogh looking to drive on the offside. It ends up going off a thick inside edge, safely enough, up to the man at short mid-wicket. But just a little bit of a anxious moment. Um, David Steele against Derek Underwood on a on a bowler's pitch, pitch that was breaking up at Northampton in 1975 and uh, Northampton bowled out for not many, 130 odd and David made 84 I think of those and uh, what a wonderful contest between two great cricketing craftsmen Barker in again outside the off stump and Keogh has a little bit of a, a waft at that it goes past the outside edge into the gloves of Ben Brown and applause for Keith Barker who had a couple of moral victories against Rob Keogh in that over but Keogh is still there, it's another maiden over for Keith Barker 12 overs, 4 maidens 1 for 27 and uh, Northamptonshire 89 for 3 yeah and uh, so you've got Underwood who there was nobody better at exploiting a pitch that was doing anything um, but, but DS hung around there for a long time and uh, that was a one of those memories that would always be vivid it was a long long time ago and it was also I think the, the first and probably the last time I saw Colin Cowdery bat live right at the end of his career and he made 50 and pulled Safraz sort of flat first bounce four to the front of the west stand I can hear it hear it now Liam Dawson continuing from the pavilion end outside the off stump just dabbed down on by Vasconcelos and it's a dot ball as James Vince comes around for the first slip. I, I like what you say about you know the, those players you see early on because for me I loved Jonathan Trot. Yes. And yeah. I loved that his first ball was always that really <laughs> solid defensive shot, regardless of the delivery bold, left alone and is there just a bit of pad which I think caused so, a yeah. deflection there past Ben Brown behind the stumps. It's, one of those ones where if it's not your day, it's going to trickle onto the stumps. And or just, just flick, the, flick the glove on the way through and call it short leg or something, yes. There was a remarkable dismissal yesterday in the Somerset Middlesex game, which I'm not sure if you would have seen on, on social media. It's Dawson's bowling cut firmly out to the sweeper by Vasconcelos, who gets off the mark. 
Just his fourth delivery. Score moves on to 90 for three, where the ball was hit really firmly back at the bowler, who was quite wide off the side of the pitch, ricocheted off some part of their body onto the stumps. Oh, dear. It was... No, yes. I didn't see that. Oh, crikey. Rather unlucky. You know, it's not your day. Fuller this time from Dawson to Keo, who's forward in defence. Funny thing about we were talking about that uh, that four of, of Cowdery off Safras. I was sitting watching it up in the, uh, the what's now the Ken Turner stand, and up about two rows from where we now commentate from. So I haven't moved on very much. Dawson's bowling defended again by Keo. No run. So in, in 50 years, I've moved about five yards probably backwards from the from the seats in front of the press box into the press box. Sad, isn't it? Really. <laughs> it's the natural progression. <laughs> <laughs> on the back foot this time, working it square, where the sweeper on the boundary quite leisurely runs in to restrict that one down to a single. Score moves on to 91 for three. I guess with a deficit of 220 runs still, it's not the kind of situation as a boundary sweeper you're going to be throwing yourself around. And no, no, probably not. I, if, I was, if I was fielding down there, I'd, say I'd just be trying to get a little look through the tunnel um, to see, especially when, when the match starts in about... 20 minutes time and watch watch Gareth Berg bowling for Limington against uh, against the Hampshire Academy but uh, so I've just got a message which might interest you from my dad then. well he's he's phrased it as Derek Underwood installed the nets at Caution which mm. is the club I play at all oh, right yeah the bowl that you just mentioned uh, he did then specify his company did I'd like to think that Derek Underwood himself, himself yes. put up the nets at, at, at Caution Cricket Club where I play but Shout out to, to his company because they are brilliant nets. Well, he was uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful bowler, and as I say, if it, one of those that if there was any help in the conditions at all, I mean, his record for England obviously is is, is wonderful, but uh, great, skillful bowler and uh, a one-off really, almost a sort of a cricketing freak in some respects. John Turner into the attack, and his first ball is down the leg side and. Keo trying to get something on it, doesn't manage to do so. Goes through to Ben Brown. Turner picked up the wicket of Emilio Gay last night. LBW for 13. In the first innings, polished off the innings with uh, the wicket of Jack White. So thoroughly enjoying this first team outing. And running in from below us at this hotel end here at the Aegeus Bowl. And Keo is in behind that. Rock solid, plays it up to mid-wicket, and there's no run. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Jonathan, no, I think about it, I mean, the Jonathan Trot forward press was a thing of great beauty in its in its own way. Um, I, I just was so determined to, to, you know, emulate that kind of whatever the yes. delivery, I'm going to block it. But now if anyone watches me play, I don't think I've really <laughs> played a defensive shot in well, quite a while. Makes you wonder how Jonathan Trot would cope in the present um, present England setup. Here's Turner in again, bowling to Keogh, plays it down to backward point and there's no run. I mean, what what players would from, you know, an, your era an era I would less, I would know less about, do you think would actually flourish in this era? Is any well, I, I, the one who, who comes to mind, and I'm sure a lot of people, particularly back in Northamptonshire will know, I'm going to say, Colin Milburn. I mean, Colin Milburn, I just about saw, obviously when he came back after his um, tragic accident, car accident that cost him an eye, but when he was at his peak in the late 60s, here's Turner in again, bowling to Keogh, again on the front foot, playing it up to mid-wicket and there's no run, stays at 91 for three. Um, I mean, Colin was a wonderful attacking player, natural player, terrific eye, uh, made 100 in his second test against the West Indies in 1966 after being bowled for 94 on debut. But there's, uh, if you've never, if you never saw him bat, if you look on... Um, YouTube. There's a, there's one or two videos of Colin batting against against Australia. I think in '68, Turner in again, bowls to Keogh, and again one of those that just didn't bounce a great deal. The odd one, it's been a really good surface, but the odd one is kept a little bit low, and that was one of them. Fortunately, Keogh was committed on the front foot and was able to get a bat to it. Uh, but Colin was a wonderful attacking player, um, and he would, I think, he would certainly have flourished because he just he just loved taking the the bowlers on the other one who I think would have would have been absolutely terrific certainly the way he played in county cricket is uh, Wayne Larkins Ned Larkins who again was a fantastic attacking player very full goes Turner driven crisply by Keogh but straight to short mid wicket the end of John Turner's over it's a maiden 
and Northampton just stay at 91 for three with 26 to Keo, one to Vasconcelos. It's not often that um, a cricketer gives rise to a verb, but Wayne Larkins, whose nickname was Ned, um, I, think, I think it might have been our, our colleague Jonathan Agnew who coined it, um, he said, I've been Nedded, because he was... Larkins was was well known when he was you know playing in his in his pomp in the uh, in the sort of late seventies early eighties. Uh, he just liked to take the bowlers on from the first ball, new ball disappear, you know spear it over extra cover for four or six. Dawson continues and a big shout there from various members of the Hampshire fielders. A little bit in this, isn't there? We were saying that it's a very dry pitch and that was really why Alex Russell came in for Northamptonshire and Liam Dawson's just finding a little bit of help here. We're not getting much help from the scoreboards though, which have, or disappeared just, again. Which have disappeared, so let's go off memory as Dawson's bowling just past the right hand of the short leg along the ground though so it was safely navigated yeah we had, we had this yesterday and uh, in fact on the first day as well and we were having to say um, the score subject to audit is <laughs> luckily we do have the live stream in front of us so we've just got to hope that they're up to date on that score it's defended right down by his feet it's going to be fascinating to see if, uh, if we do see a bit of mason crane at uh, some point as well That'll be really interesting to see how, what he can get out of this. I was going to say, that's just tapping his bat into the ground. Waits for Dawson, who bowls straight, defended again. Just the, a few of the defensive shots this over from Vasco say this just looked a bit concerning because you can, you know, he, you can tell he's still trying to score past the short leg. There is a gap at, at the square leg where if he hit it a bit harder, they'd be able to get a single. But you've got to be careful about having that slightly angled bat here because Dawson's attacking the stumps and you have those players around the bat. He's playing with a bit of an angle. Bats bowled him, looking to sweep, stepping across his stumps. And that is a ugly dismissal. There. Yeah, he's a fine player, Ricardo Vasconcelos, but I think it's probably fair to say, and I don't think I'm doing him any injustice if I say he would prefer, he always prefers to, to come in against seam rather than spin, and I think that rather demonstrates the point. Well, he was getting bogged down at yeah. that end, wasn't he? As so I was fretting, saying, he was fretting a little bit. He had the angled bat, he was desperate to get that single and get off strike, and th these are kind of issues start to fall when you had that really positive partnership between between Whiteman and Keogh at the start where they knew each other's strengths nicely and here you you know you, you've had the, the, the quick wicket and now a second one because the, the Northamptonshire bowlers have got bogged down uh, batters have got bogged down there hasn't been as many quick singles and as we say often when one wicket falls here just another one creeps in and Liam Dawson both dismissals bowled. Uh, he's bowling well, but I would say both his wickets so far have been a batter's error. Batter error. Oh, I do. I agree with you entirely. But but you know that that said, it's it's like you say, isn't it? It's it's the it's about the strategy, the bowling strategy, as opposed to the tactics almost. And and Dawson is setting the batters up. It, it's it's beautiful bowling. It's lovely to watch from a, a neutral point of view. Um, but he's. Again, he just build the pressure, and he he will know. He'll play it against obviously all of these batters before uh, and I'm sure he, he will be aware and the Hampshire coaching staff will be aware that Ricardo Vasconcelos is not always a, a great starter against spin and uh, as you said and quite correctly he was just starting to just fret a little bit and think how am I going to how am I going to get off strike how am I going to score and in the end well as you say it wasn't probably the best choice of shot and now Safe Zabe comes to the crease. Zabe's had a, an interesting start. He, he didn't play. We were talking yesterday, the fact that he made a really good 100 against uh, Surrey last year at the back end of the season, which helped um, or delay Surrey's coronation as county champions and keep Hampshire in the hunt. So I hope he'll be duly grateful. But um, he didn't then start the season, came in uh, at Taunton, and since then has, has made a number of starts without really going on and getting a big score. Four and 33 at Taunton, 35 and 26 against Nottinghamshire, and 29 in the first innings here, which is the only man in double figures. So he's he, due perhaps a, a bigger one. 
He certainly ran out of partners towards the end yeah, of Northampton's no, first innings, and his dismissal, I seem to remember, was caught at an extra cover. Just, he, just he felt had he had to try and do something with, with number 11 in here, with number 10 in. So it will be safe to say Bond strike facing the endorser and beats the outside edge. Ben Brown quick to get the ball up to the stumps. End of the over. Liam Dawson now five overs, one made in 17 runs and two wickets. Two wickets this morning, both to him. And I think after this this spell from John Turner, it's interesting. I'm not sure whether there's a clear tactic here from Hampshire because we saw Keith Barker bowl just the three overs this morning from the pavilion end. Then he, he was taken off. Ian Holland had a quick burst. But when Liam Dawson starts bowling, he tends to stay there for yeah. a long chunk of time. He'll hold down the end. Is Hampshire going to commit to having almost our hotel end as the seam end and yeah. Dawson there or at one point would we see spin at both ends could well be but for the hit, well, for the time being it's working really well just use Dawson to, to tie up an end build the pressure and I mean he's picked up both wickets to fall this morning and they say just rotate the seamers which is again excellent when you consider that I'm sure a couple of bowlers down anyway two slips in place as Turner is in to bowl to Keogh clips that away nicely through mid wicket could go all the way for four I think, in fact, it is going to. Yes, it does. Long chase around there, but can't quite get to it. Uh, Fletcher Middleton was in hot pursuit, but couldn't manage to put, uh, reel it in this side of the rope. And it goes for four, takes Keogh into the 30s. 30 to him, and Northamptonshire to 95 for four. They're still 216 runs behind, so long, long way adrift. If you're worried about your catering arrangements, lunch today at 10 past one because we're making up time from yesterday. His Turner in again, bowls to Keogh, who's forward, plays it back down the pitch, and there's no run. Now, Wayne Larkins, we were talking about a couple of overs ago, was a, a fantastic player, and, uh, yeah, he was... Uh, you would hear opposition attacks say, you know, we've, we've, we've been subjected to a thorough netting, um, but a wonderful player to watch, and again, I mean, he would have he would have fitted like a glove into the sort of the ethos of the England side. It just makes you also wonder as Turner comes in and bowls to Keogh as again defensively forward plays it up to Barker at mid-off and there's no run. It makes you wonder how some of those players uh, would have got on, you know, in, in T20 cricket, in the era of T20. Um, they would be making an absolute fortune around the world in, in franchises. And You'd be saying to the, the Chennai Super Kings, you just got netted. You've just been netted. That's right. Well, they say some very, very good attacks around the country. Played a bit of test cricket, but probably not as much as his many fans would have liked. Short ball this time from Turner. And Keogh gets everything out of danger. Goes through to Ben Brown. I would love that in the current England test men's test team, we've got obviously the Night Hawk nickname for Stuart mm. Broad someone should be the Ned the someone Ned be, yeah. you know, maybe that's Ben Stokes because he always you know charges down the wicket to, to <laughs> any bowler who's ever bowling to him it's very it's very Wait, I mean heady. he was he, and he certainly I mean he in many respects a very orthodox player Wayne Larkins his technique was very sound but he just hit the ball very very hard his Turner in again bowls to Keir works it nicely into the onside but a good bit of fielding cut off the possibility of a single at uh, short mid wicket I tell you what, there's a great support for John Turner around this ground, isn't it? We noticed yesterday when he uh, came into the attack um, not long before the end of the Northamptonshire innings, but uh, he got a, a big round of applause and everything he did was was uh, greeted with terrific uh, support around the ground and he's getting it again today. Popular figure, obviously. Turner is in, bowls just back of a length and just got a little bit big on Rob Keogh. It was onto the front foot. In the end, played it solidly enough out into the covers. And there's no run. End of the over. 95 for four. Keogh is 30. Safe save yet to get off the mark. And it's interesting the way... It will be interesting to see how safe save plays this because <laughs> he's shown in his career that he can bat long. And think about that. Let's say that in his against Surrey last year. But um, he, in the week, he played for Northamptonshire seconds against... Um, London Schools, I think, Cricket Association, and made a ridiculous hundred and some odd in, in a T20 game. And obviously, Blast starting on Wednesday, and he's going to be a key man in that. But he's got, a, a, I think, a sort of grinding change of gear is indicated between uh, what, how he needs to play today and how he'll need to play on Wednesday. Dawson continuing to Zabu, sweeping top edge, caught by James Vince at first slip. 
big shout from the Hampshire bowlers, though, and nothing from the umpire. The finger stays down. Hit him on the arm, I think. Looking at this replay on the live stream, it must have been close to the to the glove. Yeah, it wasn't bit, far off, but I think the, I just saw the umpire. I think just just uh, gesturing that he hit him on the just on the forearm. He felt. So that Zabe wasn't going anywhere, was he? You would have had to drag him <laughs> off. Dawson's bowling sweeping again over the head of the short leg and down to the boundary for four. Two fielders in pursuit in the end, but the attacking approach taken from Zabe, I think his partner, well, his, his teammate in the changing room, Ricardo Vasconcelos, is going to be looking at him and just saying, just be careful yeah, with that shot so early on in your innings. It's it's high tariff, isn't it, this? It's it's a high-risk strategy. Um, I mean, Zabe is a, is a very, very good sweeper and reverse sweeper. And he's obviously determined that he's not going to get tied down in the way that maybe Ricardo Vasconcelos did. But it, that in itself, of course, brings dangers. And there's two men back on the sweep, one deep and one just on the, the orthodox 45. Dawson over the wicket, outside the off stump, pushed off the back foot, out to deep point. And a single collected, brings up the 100 runs for Northamptonshire. And there's a good smattering of applause here from... Well, I tell you what, Mel, tell you what, Mel, something of an achievement, the way Northamptonshire have been batting lately. They've had three, three sub-100 totals in the last four games, so... Yeah, they, they should be proud. Good job. Liam Dawson to Keo. He's defending solidly. He's really the player this morning who has looked pretty unpenetrable in his defence. He's 30 off 96 deliveries. But he's sticking out there. Just trying to anchor this Northamptonshire innings. Dawson bowls flatter, this time on the back foot, pushing to short leg for no run. It's great to see Rob Keogh, you know, taking the responsibility, senior player. Um, this is the way he needs to play. He can do it. We've seen him do it so many times before. Still a huge amount of work to do, though. Dawson in. Falls just short of the short leg fielder. Allows the batters to get through for a single. Keogh moves on to 31. The score 101 for four at the end of the over. That deficit of 210 runs. Yeah, Northamptonshire still... As Melissa was saying, a very long way behind. As far as the other matches are concerned, it looks as though Surrey, it's a question of whether it will go in, into this afternoon because Surrey need 58 to win against uh, Kent. Bold Kent out this morning for 141 and they're 10 for no wicket. So it looks as though Surrey will wrap that up fairly soon, possibly before lunch. Nottinghamshire stretching their lead against Essex at Trent Bridge. Knott's 402 for seven, so 104 ahead as... Turner starts a fresh over from this hotel end. And again, Keogh rocking onto the front foot, pushing it up to Barker at mid-off. And there's no run. At Middlesex, 116 for three, following on against Somerset at Lords. Middlesex still 113 behind. Their batting has been a bit woeful this year oh, for Middlesex. Certainly in the, I mean, the early stage of the season, it was it was almost ridiculous, wasn't it? They you were look counting at the one to three kind of <laughs> each week. Three wickets for... <laughs> Three runs. What are they? Four for four in the, the first round of matches. Extraordinary. Here's Turner in again. Bowls to Keogh. Again, very solid. Plays it up to short mid wicket, and there's no run. In Division 2, uh, Gloucestershire might have been asked to uh, follow on by Durham, but Durham haven't enforced it. Gloucestershire bowled out for 292, but Durham have opted to bat again. They're 33 for no wicket in the second inning, so leading by 186. That's down at Bristol. At Hove, Glamorgan 163 for three in their second innings against Sussex, so they're still 184 adrift. Turner, in again, bowls to Keogh, plays that down just behind the square on the leg side. He's going to get a single. Man comes in from the boundary at deep backward square. One more to Keogh, takes him to 32. Northamptonshire to 102 for four. And at New Road, Worcestershire, who need 271 to win against Leicestershire, a 91 for three, so still a little bit left in that one. We'd all sort of rather assume that Worcestershire might fold again and Leicestershire would win that comfortably, but they're, they're hanging in there, much as Northamptonshire are attempting to do here. Zabe 
on strike. Turner coming round the wicket to him, the left-hander, and say playing it down to backward point. Another really good bit of fielding to keep the pressure on, not give the batter the chance to just a little release shot, get off strike. Stays at 102 for four. I made the connection last year because Surrey looked like such a good team that essentially they were the empire in <laughs> Star Wars. And I, I, I made a few enemies in Surrey for this connection. But I do truly think that all the counties need to unite to beat them. They are so good. Here's uh, Turner in again, bowls to Zabe, who this time he does get the little release shot down, this time to long leg for a single. And uh, I think you're going to be updating BBC Radio Silent. I'll steal the rest of your over. No, yeah, all yours. Until... All yours, Mel. So John Turner with just one more ball in this over left. There hasn't been much sideways movement for the Hampshire bowlers this morning. It's fairly flat out here. It's blue skies, clouds dotted around. So it does look like spin is going to be the main form of attack, but John Turner's doing a fantastic job at holding this end down. Full defended back to him by Keo to complete the over. The score 103 for four. Have a quick update coming your way very shortly. Here we go. The score here at Northamptonshire, 103 for four, with a deficit still of 208. There's been 53 runs added this morning for Northamptonshire, but two breakthroughs for Hampshire. Sam, White, Sam Whiteman, who was 25, not out overnight. He fell for 45, bowled by Dawson and Ricardo Vasconcelos. Looking to sweep, left his stumps exposed, and he was bowled for one. So Rob Keogh, he's 32, not out in the middle. Safe Zabe, six not out. Hampshire need just a further more six wickets to win. The score, 103 for four. Yeah, that was a full-length ball from Dawson that had, well, it had Safe Zabe hit on the pad as he was trying to whip it away through mid-wicket. There was an appeal, but not out. Sorry, I've never spoken so fast in my life. You only <laughs> have about 30 seconds. I feel like it was too much to say. There's, well, there's been a, bit, bit, been a bit to talk about. Shall I keep going with Dawson? Yeah, go on. I feel like I've got a connection to him yeah, now. Yeah, that one swept to the boundary for four. <laughs> good shot from Safe Zabe, who you say is a good sweeper of the ball he certainly showed that already and you can you can tell there is a you know a, a different kind of confidence the sweep which yeah. Ruskin Sailors attempted looked like a panic shot it was a, a kind of get out of jail here but but safe this is safe to say this is his shot which he likes to play and so far what well, while they're retrieving the ball Mel there's a support for your concept of the outboxer I've just had a just had a message through about this which I'll share with you in a second I'm very excited. I've got my first audience. I'll go on Dragon's Den soon. Dawson bowls outside the off stump. Cuts to the short third fielder. Yeah, our, our friend Ollie Helfrick, who's uh, on the Isle of Man, great North Hampshire supporter and a regular listener of ours. Great to have you with us as ever, Ollie. He says, uh, uh, love the concept of the outbox set. Absolutely behind it. And um, he then goes on to make a comment that you may not agree with. Oh, I'll build up for it after this delivery from Dawson, which is pushed back to him very casually by Safe Zabe. Build the, build the suspense. He says, uh, ever the cricketing optimist, I'm clinging to the hope of uh, Rob Keogh's uh, getting top billing on the out box set for a long innings against Hampshire here. So top commentary as always. Thanks, Ollie. And very gr no, great as ever to have you with us. Dawson's bowling defended late by... So I think on you're on a winner here. You just need a biz, biz, you know, business development officer or something. Kev will do that for you. Yeah, I have a few kind of cricketing proposals which I've thought up over the years. So there's certainly a company in there somewhere. It's Dawson's Bowling on the back foot. A thick edge, but semi-controlled out to deep point for a single. End of the over, 108 for four. I have fantastic ideas, Radders, but I'll save them for next time we're on together. <laughs> Great Kevin stuff. James comes on. Thanks, Melissa. And uh, yeah, Melissa will be back with us a little bit later on. Kevin James will be rejoining me in a second. So 108 for four here at Northamptonshire, having lost two wickets this morning, both to Liam Dawson, Sam Whiteman, bowled for 45 and bowled on the drive. And then Ricardo Vasconcelos bowled sweeping by Dawson 
for a single. Rob Kehoe has battled away really well for Northamptonshire. 32 off 102 balls, been joined by Safe Zabe. And it is going to be Zabe on strike, the left-hander, as Turner begins a fresh over from this hotel end and bowls to Zabe, who runs it down wide of second slip. All along the floor, there is a third man in. In front of the Shane Warne stand, so they come through for a single. Zabe goes to uh, 12, and Northamptonshire to 109 for four. So still 202 runs behind. Kevin James back with these. Yeah, well, a couple of the uh, eight taken uh, this morning. Wisconsin has just got too far over, didn't he, yeah. with the sweep shot. Whiteman it's driving at a ball he perhaps shouldn't I have I don't been. think it's a business shot for Ricardo Vasconcelos, to be honest. I think it's a natural, it, as Mel was just saying, I think Safe Zabe is a natural sweeper. Here's Turner in again on leg stump, worked away nicely by Keogh down to deep backward square. There's certainly one, that's all there'll be. Takes Keogh to 33 and Northamptonshire to 110 for four. It doesn't seem... Thinking back, having watched, obviously, Ricardo Vasconcelos a lot over the last six seasons, he, it's not a. Don't think it's really a business stroke for him, a productive stroke for him, a comfortable stroke for him, and uh, paid the penalty today. So, Mel's suggestion of the uh, uh, the alt box set of, of lots of blocking has, has got almost universal has acclaim. Really? Oh, absolutely! Ooh. Turner in again, bowling to <laughs> Zabe, just runs it out into the offside, and there's no run. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I mean, I, I've I've put my order in already. <laughs> <laughs> for three hours of David Steele blocking the proverbial out of oh, it. Oh, yes, now that would be a good one. Or DS, it was just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we've just had a... I think you were just coming back on, and uh, Ollie Helfrick, our friend from the Isle of Man, who's listening to us, was saying, you're hoping that Rob Keogh's very long innings today here, he hopes, is going to figure on this, uh, on this particular video. Here's... <laughs> Turner in again, and that's lovely square drive by Safe Zabe. Running out towards the boundary, a good stop on the, the fence just in front of the Shane Warne stand. Keeps it to two. A nice stroke from Zabe. He goes to 14, 112 for four. Also much enjoyed your uh, memories of batting with uh, Matthew Hayden when you were on with Melissa earlier. And uh, also had a spell at Northamptonshire, of course, as captain for a couple of seasons. Oh, gosh, you did, yes. 1999 and 2000, yes, took Northamptonshire to the... Division two title, the first year it was uh, two divisions in 2000. Good um, guy. Well, seriously, good wonderful guy. player as well. Here's Turner in again, bowls short. as a ducks underneath it, goes through to Ben Brown. I have to say the innings of his I, I will always remember in Northamptonshire colours was against Essex at Wantage Road when um, it was... Northamptonshire prepared a pitch that it did turn a bit on the first day, not sharply, but it turned a, probably a little bit more than it should have done on the first day. Um, and inevitably the pitch panel was convened. I think the late Philip Sharp came and one or two others mm. and gathered at the far end of the ground in the, the new indoor centre as Turner is in again bowling to Zabe, who's defensively forward, pushes it up to Barker at mid-on and there's no run. End of the over, 112 for four. Keo is 33, Zabe is 14, Turner's bowled eight overs, one for 20. And um, Northampton, Essex bowled out for about 250 and Northampton went in. Uh, bearing in mind this was the sharp end of the season when Northampton were looking to, to win the title. And uh, it was, you know, what, is it going to be a reported? Is it going to be a, a deduction? And Matthew Hayden went in, made 160-odd, 164, I think. Um, and Northampton got a big lead and uh, they decided there was no action necessary. And the way that when he got to 50, acknowledged the pitch panel, in the indoor school, <laughs> got to 100, acknowledged the pitch panel, got to 150, acknowledged the pitch panel. It was a wonderful exercise in making your point and a very, very skillful bit of batting. Here's Liam Dawson with 2 to 25 from his seven overs so far. Pushing forward there, Keo. There's a shout for an LBW. I don't know if it has come off the bat. It obviously hasn't if there's a shout for an LBW, but maybe it was pad bat. Didn't look as though it uh, hit the pad on the fall or the bat on the fall. Perhaps it was a little bit of both. But if you say context was everything, then that yeah, was... Yeah, that's uh, funny. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Always try and make a point like that. Dawson round the wicket again. And oh, that's Oof. beaten Keo outside the off stump. That, Just turn, every, that, has, yeah. that has gripped. Just every now and then. And that's not in any rough. That's from just outside off stump. Keo was initially looking to play at that one. Yeah, so uh, Dawson, for the right-hander, is basically trying to bowl fairly straight, so there won't be any rough there. 
So any turn, it really is the wicket as that's played quite easily. It won't be every ball, we won't be anywhere near every ball. But uh, just every now and then we saw one, with, didn't we, with uh, Alex Russell on the first day where he was having to pitch the ball straight to the right hand and one did go. Here's uh, Dawson again. And bowls and Keogh lets that one alone outside the off stump. That's quite a long way outside off stump, that one. So just the two wickets to fall this morning. And the game on the nursery ground underway. I don't know if Gareth Berg's Limington are in the field first or not. I can't tell from here. But Coloured clothing as well. Yeah, they, they, I think the 50 over games are, yeah. Effectively one day games in this form of the game as that's pushed out on the offside. I think they play two forms. Yeah, I must admit, I'm not, I'm not up on my local club cricket, so um, I could be wrong. But I know they play timed games. Yeah. They start earlier. Well, I think I know. And then they play limited overs games. So I think the limited overs games are in the coloured clothing which they're playing. Across the way here, yeah, forward is uh, Keo. That's back to Dawson. And uh, there is uh, no run. I think generally, I mean, I th you know, North Ants will be reasonably happy uh, with this morning. I mean, we've had, you know, a pretty good chunk of this morning session, an hour and 40. They've only lost two in the context of the way they've batted in this game. Uh, you know, I suppose that's, that's that's not too bad, is it? Well, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I said to, uh, said to Melissa when we were on together, you know, that for Northampton to get to 100 at the moment is, is a step in the right direction. But uh, no, they've uh, they've done well. You know, joking aside, Rob Keogh's done the, just the job that you expect your senior your senior pro to do and he's really played with a lot of a uh, lot of application a lot of resilience just the sort of traits that coaching staff are looking for at the moment and so he's, he, we know he can do it he's done it so many times in the past in North Hampshire Colours and we're going to see a bit of leg spin we're going to see Mason Crane come into the attack for the first time in this match it's a affectionate ripple of applause from around the ground as he comes into bowl from this hotel end of the ground from which we are commentating he has a slip and a forward short leg and he's going to be bowling to the left-handed safe Zabe this is going to be a very interesting encounter because Zabe won't usually be backward in coming forward when it comes to taking the spinner on nudges that out into the offside Kia was keen on a single because Keith Barker doesn't look to be I have to say doesn't look to be moving particularly well out there at the moment that's just in the last couple of overs but they decide against the single he's craning again over the wicket rolls <gasps> to Zabe and that you could just see it heading for the rough and Zabe was a little bit caught on the crease and manages to get some bat on it nudges it down towards backward point but that was an anxious moment it kept low as well didn't it didn't that? bounce Ooh, I it thought didn't that bounce was... a great deal and it was heading you can see the, the patches of the foot marks there for which I'm sure Mason Crane will be aiming. He's in again, bowls, flights that one up nicely, and Zabe works it into the onside, goes up to mid-wicket, and there's no run. 112 well, for four. When the leg is on, yeah, something always it. happening. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, yeah. It's poked me up there. <laughs> I think most of the crowd will be loving this as well. They love Mason Crane here. Here he is. Running in again, bowls to Zabe. A little bit short, cut away by Zabe. Runs for him here, goes down behind square through backward point, and... A long chase round there for Mohamed Abbas. That's asking him to do a lot, I was going to say, he comes through for a couple of runs. A long run round there. And he's now trudging back, I think it's fair he's, to say. He's got about two acres to cover out there. <laughs> Get somebody else out there, the Wide surely. open spaces of the Aegeus Bowl. 114 for four. Zabe to 16. Crane bowling again to Zabe, who tries to nudge it round the corner. He's... I think it just hit him on the pad. He was appealing for LBW, Mason Crane, got no support from anybody else, and the umpire indicating that it was going down the leg side. Yeah. Missing leg stump, I think, fairly comfortably. But this is fascinating to watch. It really is. This is good stuff. And here is Crane in again. Bowls to Zabe. Short again. He tries for the cut. Goes over the top of the outside edge. He was trying to play a horizontal bat cut shot. Just bounced over the top of the bat into the gloves of Ben Brown. And two runs off the over, but, well, a huge amount of interest. Yeah. 114 for four. Keo is 33. Zabe is 16. And if we see much more of Crane against Zabe, it's going to be, a, well, 
little contest to relish. It's going to be one or the other, that's yes. for sure. Uh, Brian Budd, who emailed just a little while ago, sunandcricket at gmail.com, he says, so with Dawson taking uh, two wickets with a little turn and North Ends focused on safety first, surely there shouldn't be a better time to bring on Mason Crane. Well, there you are, Brian. Your uh, wish has been granted. We'll keep our beady eye on Mason Crane. There's a little bit of turn there. There's a little bit of help for him there. If he can bowl consistently, as we know he can, then uh, it's going to be uh, fascinating. So, 114 for four. As uh, We've got an all-spin attack here at the moment. There's Dawson. And he's bowling to the right hand at Rob Keogh. And there is a very, 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 very silly mid-off just in front of him there as Keogh's on the back foot. Plays that into the ground. Fletcher Middleton is in there. Close in. He's almost shaking hands with the batter. He's that close. Dawson into his ninth over here. The two wickets that have fallen this morning, both to him. From that pavilion end, comes in and bowls and goes oh. forward. Oh, it's a little bit in the air. I suppose everybody's showing catch it because Fletcher Middleton is so close <laughs> that anything that doesn't go immediately to ground, there will be a shout of catch it. Whereas normally when there's nobody anywhere near there, nobody would say a word. <laughs> but he is so close. No time to react, that's for sure. As uh, Dawson bowls, Keogh sweeps, and that's a good shot that goes out square on the leg side, but there is a fielder there. Keogh moves on to 34, 115 for four. North Ants behind by 196. Uh, a tweet to share with you that may be slightly contentious, but of a, of a Hampshire nature. So we love I'll, those. Uh, I'll uh, offer you that one at the end of the over. Yeah, we love those. He's going to switch to over the wicket, Liam Dawson. Look for that rough to the left-hander, Zabe. Bowls and Zabe sweeping from outside off stump. That's a good shot. Fetched and he's hit it hard along the ground. Four runs. Love that shot. Well, I don't think Liam Dawson will. No, he doesn't. But I mean, this is this is the way I, you know Zabe will play. He's he's I was saying earlier with the, with Mal. He's he sweeps well. He reverse mm. sweeps well. And to him, it's you know it's just perfectly natural way of playing slow bowling. Um, and he will not. Very much in the, the modern style, he won't want to be bowled at. No, it's good. Which is what he's going to make. It's such an interesting yeah. contest. And, well, from Northampton's point of view, it, it's, it's heart in the mouth time almost every delivery at the moment. But uh, it's interesting stuff. Hampshire are bolstering in that leg side. Yeah. Keith Parker's gone out to a, a deepish mid wicket. I suppose he's just about saving single, but that's very much for the sweep shot there. There is a fielder behind square on the offside for the reverse sweep as well. Here's Dawson over the wicket to Zabe. Zabe drives through the covers. There is a man deep. It's quite a clever field, this. Normally, a spinner, left-arm spinner bowling over the wicket, would have a mid-off and an extra cover. But I think the slightly unorthodox way that Zabe yeah. bats, uh, they've decided that they're going to dispense with those two fielders. That would be a traditional field on the offside, those two, but nothing there at all. There's... Dawson round the wicket to Keogh this time. And Keogh's forward, gets wrapped on the pad. That looks very close and he's gone. Dawson picks up the third wicket of the morning. And Keogh, who's battled hard for his 34, goes. And Northamptonshire now are 120 for five. The only thing I think Rob Keogh was looking at there as he just hesitated a minute before leaving the crease was possibly, and I'm, I'm guessing at this because we're not quite behind, whether he thought he just got himself outside the line. But we'll have a look at the uh, the replay. Pushed forward, got a decent stride in. And that was, I imagine, the only thing that was that was in his mind. It it just looked to me as though it was a slightly quicker ball from the arm ball, maybe from Liam Dawson. Let's have a look. And oh no, that's 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 gone. <laughs> it's not turned, is it? It hasn't. It's it's gone. As we say, I think it was the arm ball. It just went straight on, and Keo, yeah, was hit on the line of I should think middle and off. And uh, I don't think that was missing anything very much. So Keogh goes for 34, and, and with him, one suspects Northamptonshire's hopes of possibly prolonging this one greatly into the afternoon, but we shall see. Uh, let's just hope um, the, the guys on the live picture feed are listening because Kyle Abbott, who's up here with us. Oh, yes. Uh, he's moving well, everybody. We're OK. Don't worry. No, nothing to worry about. Um, if you're listening, let's have another replay of that, please. Uh, this will tell me how. This will tell us. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, there we go. On cue. Here we go. He's having a look, Carl. He's happy. His yeah, fingers he's up. His fingers up. Yeah. Thank you, guys. It, it must be. It must be 
wonderful to have this sort of power that Kyle's got, that he just, just yes. Yeah. If I, well, I, that's the reason I mentioned his name because if I'd have asked for it, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance, but no, because it's uh, because it's Carl. He manages to get uh, the replay straight away. But no, it was absolutely, absolutely yeah. gone ski. I think when you had a chance to look at that. Um, yes, it was just um, Mahendra who who's been uh, tweeting yes. and uh, keeping up with us on this game. Uh, put a picture up earlier just with the, the game on in progress and the sunshine and just saying what a you know fantastic venue and all the rest of it. And Mahendra is saying oh for Northlands Road. <laughs> so he's obviously obviously missing. The old ground at uh, Northlands. Yeah. I do remember covering uh, covering matches there, and uh, it had a had a charm of its own, didn't it? It was quaint, um, and it was a good batting pitch, that's for sure. So uh, it's you, isn't it? It is. And Crane is in short and cut away by Safe Save. He's gone out to the man sweeping on the cover boundary. Is it Joe Weatherly out there? I think it is. And they come through for mm. a single. 21 to Zabe, Northamptonshire. 22 to Zabe, rather. Northamptonshire to 121 for five. James Sales, new batter in. One of a number in this match who've been on a pair. Yeah. Now, he, you know, you talk about fight, and we were talking about it earlier and yesterday, that you just want to see him just be a little bit more positive. Not... not thrashing it around no. but just in defence he was a bit tentative wasn't he when he came out in the first uh, innings played really well the first in at, uh, down at Taunton and that's flighted up and that's a, that's a bit of a welcome to the crease <laughs> full toss for Sales which he drives straight <laughs> to the man at extra cover who then gets a what a roar well it was almost a, I thought I expected to see him off a lap of honour for stopping it was a good bit of fielding but uh, great roar from the uh, fielders out that's flighted up again by Crane driven by Sales up to mid-off, and there's no run. John Turner fields. Yes, it will be interesting to see how Sales handles this situation now, with Rob Keogh having gone. Crane in again, bowls to Sales, plays it back down the pitch for Crane to field. It's, I mean, it, it's a little bit over pitch from Crane at the moment, but I'd rather see that than anything yeah, too short. So short, I think yeah. he's aware of that as well. So. But it's it's okay. It's okay. Crane over the wicket in bowls. That is a little bit shorter. And Sales going onto the back foot, jams it into the ground, rolls up to extra to uh, mid wicket rather. And there's no run. One twenty one for five. A game going on. An impromptu match down to our right, it's alongside the main scoreboard. The tennis ball. Crane in again bowls to Sales who drives on the bounce to short extra. And that's the end of Mason Crane's over. Just a single off it, 121 for five. Sales yet to get off the mark. Safe Zabe is on 22. Northamptonshire still 190 runs behind, and we've got about 20 minutes to go till lunch. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's OK for Mason. Uh, yeah, it was probably on the whole a little too full, but I'd rather see that. I think we'd all rather see that than it just dropping too short, because there's no pace in this pitch for the spinners. So you've got to get it right up there. So if, if you're not sure... And just get it right up to the new batter. Don't give him a chance to just work it into the gap short, have time to pick his gap. And when you've got a field set the way he has with an you know, mid extra cover mid off and a mid wicket and a mid on, you, you, you've kind of got insurance against a ball that's fairly full and straight. And that's what happened in that over. Here's Dawson then. Over the wicket. Save off the back foot there. Just nudges it back to uh, Dawson. Now he's 22 off 27, so uh, yeah, quite a positive uh, innings again from him. 121 for five means Northamptonshire still 190 runs behind. Sunshine's still out here at the Aegeus. There's the sweep shot, he misses that one. He certainly likes that sweep, he's he going to play that regardless. Quick hands on that sweep, but just hits him on the pad. He's one outside off stump. We have just under 15 minutes till lunch. We're playing slightly uh, extended. I presume we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, because of the extra overs from yesterday. Sabes on the back foot. Quietly pushes that out on the offside. Now, Hampshire do have a man in Keith Barker actually back on the offside. They've decided to have a deep forward square leg. They know uh, Zabe will attempt to sweep, but at this time that uh, Dawson has got his extra insurance on the offside with Barker just to his right. That's played out quietly on the leg side. And there is uh, no run. So three wickets this morning, all falling to Liam Dawson, who passed 250 career first-class wickets last week at Kent. 
Comes in again and bowls. There's the sweep. And he's wrapped on the pad there again. Just a little shorter to be sweeping. He was trying to hit it down as well as along. Just, you can see him just trying to get on top of the bounce there and play that away. But he's getting his front foot well outside the off stump, so no real danger there of being LBW. Comes in again. Bowls. This time it's just a quiet forward defensive out on uh, the leg side. He's, he's a little bit more interesting to watch, isn't he, Zabe? Oh, yeah, he uh, is. He's a, he is. I mean, he's, he's a terrific talent. And as I say, I think it, it surprised quite a few people that he didn't start the season in the championship side. And same when I was on with Mal. I mean, he, he's, his scores this year have been interesting since he came into the side at Taunton because he's, he's had any number of starts... Uh, without really going on and getting an innings of, of, of real substance. I mean, we went for four, for four early on at Taunton, Lewis Gregory bowled him all over the place. But since then, 33, 35, 26, 29, and now 22 not out. So he's been getting starts and not going on. So from Northampton's point of view, they dearly love him to mm. go and get an innings of real substance today. But he needs somebody to bat with him. Here's Crane. Bowling to James Sales with a slip and a forward short leg and Sales... <laughs> Playing back, and you wouldn't think there's a huge amount of future in that, really, especially with the old boy keeping a little bit low. But he, that was okay. He got a bat on it anyway, just run it down towards slip where James Vince fields. Crane in again, bowls to Sales, very full, driven by Sales, and he's going to get his first run as it goes out to deep extra cover. So Sales is off the mark, off the pair as well. He's one, and Northamptonshire 122 for five. It's an interesting time of the season, isn't it? Because you've got to, looking around the scores and the other matches, and indeed what's happening here, you've got a, a number of batters who have got to, got to give it the big brigadier block today. <laughs> but then, in a couple of days' time, Ooh. big full toss and hit away by Zabe. I'm just going to see if that's going to be called a no ball. They're just checking with the square leg umpire. And also checking whether it's gone for four or six. It was swung away by save, save down behind square. Uh, signalled as four and not a, a no ball. First so really bad ball. For it is. First time. first one he's bowled. They put it away. 26 to him, 126 for five. I remember a couple of years ago in the last in this comparable round of matches, the last round of championship matches before the T20 starts, Crane in again bowls to Zabe, who's defensively forward back down the pitch. And um, Adam Rossington had to bat for a long time on the last day um, against Kent down at Canterbury and doing an interview with him afterwards and he was sort of <laughs> slightly incredulous at the, the, the change of gear that he was going to have to make very soon that's short cut away by Zay but only as far as Barker at backward point that cuts off any chance of a single and he said you know I've, I've batted like four hours for 50 or something today and um, in three days time I'm going to have to be trying to you know, smash the thing out of the ground. Well, that's so a good point. Yeah. Um, that's the nature of the schedule. And players like Zabe, of course, in both formats for Northamptonshire. Here's Crane in again. Bowls, and that doesn't bounce a great deal. It's outside the off stump. Zabe thought about cutting, eventually pulled out of the shot, and it was taken by Ben Brown. And that's the end of the over. 126 for five. 26 to Zabe. One to James Sales. As far as uh, the other matches are concerned, Middlesex look to be succumbing against uh, Somerset at Lords. 131 for five now, Somerset, uh, Middlesex. So they're still 98 behind, five wickets standing. Nottinghamshire grinding on against uh, Essex at Trent Bridge. 429 for nine, so a lead of 131. And we have our first result in Division One of the day. Surrey have beaten Kent by 10 wickets. Down at the over. Wow, that must have been a even bigger collapse by Kent than uh, originally uh, thought. Wow. Uh, right, here's Dawson round the wicket to Sales. He pushes it back to him. Because yes, Kent started today 80 for four. Yes, 141 all out. That's right. They've uh, collapsed in a bit of a heap. They have. Oh, he's on the back foot there and it keeps a little though. Fortunately, Dave, uh, James Sales is playing straight. can be sometimes difficult just to play it off the pitch here because if there is a slightly irregular bounce from time to time and the odd one turns, you have to be a little careful. But it is coming off slowly, so you do sometimes have time to readjust. Not always. There's a cut shot. That's gone very fine. And that might just go all the way. And it does. 
Sales moves on to five in the Northamptonshire total on to 131 for five and uh, the deficit now is down to 181. Still a long way to go here for North Ants. Yeah, Tom Laws picked up five wickets for Surrey this morning to uh, hasten Kent's demise. Surrey marching on at the top of the table. Mm. Dawson in again. Mason Crane's back into his position this time. Sales just works that on onto the onside where there's a big gap and he moves on to six and it's 131 for five. Elsewhere, Durham uh, who decided to bat again rather than enforce the follow-on against Gloucestershire at Bristol. 83 for no wicket in their second inning, so 236 ahead. That's in Division 2, of course. Dawson switches to over the wicket again to the left-hander. So he just pushes out square on the offside. They're going to take a quick single. It's good running. 132 for five. At Hove... Glamorgan 211 for three in their second innings against Sussex, so still 147 behind. Sun just disappears momentarily. Uh, sails is forward. It's back to Dawson. And that is the end of the over. Six runs conceded off that one. Dawson, 11 overs, three for 37. And at New Road, still a bit of juice left in this one. Uh, Worcestershire needing 271 to win against Leicestershire. 116 for three. So still need another 155 to win. But looks as though the uh, maybe the conditions there have improved a little bit for batting after the clatter of wickets on the first day. Josh Davies picked up all three wickets to fall. But uh, Adam Hose is 53 not out. Gareth Roderick on 38, and those two have put on 86 unbroken for the fourth wicket. So it's an interesting contest there this afternoon, potentially at New Road. Here, it's Mason Crane to continue, starting his fourth over. He's bowling round the wicket to the left-handed safe Zabe, who nudges that out into the onside, rolls up to mid-wicket, and there's no run. Yeah, Sun's disappeared behind some fairly high, fluffy clouds at the moment, but... The uh, nursery ground is actually in sunshine over to our left. Mm. That happens when Gareth Berg plays, you see. Flighted up, again an attempted sweep by Zabe. And as Kevin was saying in the previous over, at least he's getting his pads out, sorry, his pad outside the line. Just trying to sort of help that around the corner. Didn't make contact. Sun back out here again now. As Crane is in, flights that up to Zabe, drives. And fielded on the bounce by Crane off his own bowling. No run. About ten minutes to go, just a little less than ten minutes to go until lunch. As Crane is in again. That's a big full toss pulled away by Zabe. Now where's that gone? Has it gone all the way? I think not. Oh, it has. I saw it bounce and it jams just over the ropes as the umpire. So it's half a dozen to save Zabe. Going to happen, obviously, with a leg spinner. You're going to get the odd bad ball, and Zabe determined that he's, if he does get one, he's going to put it away, which he's done a couple of times now. And he goes to 33 in North Amplitude, to 138 for five. So 88 runs scored in the session so far, but they've lost three wickets. Crane in again, bowls to Zabe, pushing forward again, getting outside the line. It's fielded by Fletcher Middleton, who's under the helmet at forward short leg, just Scampered across the pitch to retrieve. Vince in its slip, of course. Middleton at forward short leg. There's Crane in again. Bowls to Zabe, who goes on to the back foot. Plays it up towards ex towards uh, mid-wicket. And that's the end of another Mason Crane over. Four overs for 14. And Northamptonshire 138 for five with 33 to save Zabe. Six to James Sales. Right, now Wesley, who's um, one of the media guys uh, here, has just sent me the link to the Hampshire Academy Limington game, which is taking place uh, on the, uh, on the uh, nursery ground. Now, this is, here's a quirk. Explain this for me, because uh, it looks like Limington are batting first in this 50 overs a side game, and Mohamed Abbas is 16 not out. Can somebody explain that one for me? Is there two Mohamed Abbas's on the ground? Uh, so turned away on the uh, leg side. Uh, uh, for most opposition players, one is enough. But to have two, wow. But one's batting. <laughs> and uh, one is... And in fact, 16. It can't be the same Abbas because this person's 16 not out. 
Well, welcome Without being unkind to me. This is the Five Sports Extra. All right. Very good timing. We're just trying to work out why there's two Mohammed Abbasis on this ground. One in the game next door and the one in front of us. As that's turned away on the offside by Zaib, who moves on to 34. A sprightly 34 from him. That's come off 44 balls. 140 for five. Three wickets have fallen this morning. Uh, it was a good first hour for Northamptonshire, Andrew, wasn't it? Really? It was. Very we were solid. looking for fight uh, from the Northamptonshire batters second time around as sales plays out quietly on the uh, offside. And after the first hour, they showed some. But then Simon Whiteman, who'd been uh, very, very tight in his technique, just inexplicably drove at Liam Dawson to a ball that wasn't quite there to drive. And it turned out of the rough and he was bowled through the gate. He was out for 45 as sales plays that out on the uh, onside for a single. 141 for five. Ricardo Vasconcelos tried to sweep Liam Dawson, went too far across his stumps and was bowled. He went for one. And then Rob Keogh was LBW to Liam Dawson for 34. 120 for five, that went down. And here they are at 141 for five. Still 170 in arrears as that's played out quietly by Zay back to the bowler. But they have shown fight, better fight second time around, having bowled out for 56 yesterday. The lowest score ever on this ground, his 22 year history, as that's played out on the offside, they'll take a quick single, as Ben Brown runs round to extra cover to pick up, 143 for five at the end of that over. Yeah, improved performance from uh, Northamptonshire, and certainly coach John Sadler made it very clear when I had a chat with him last night for the BBC, and he was saying that, you know, it's a question of, yes, we know, and it's, it's stating the, the obvious really, that Northamptonshire need to show a bit of fight, and, but they need to do it not just for 20 overs, but for a whole session and indeed a whole day. Well, it was a very good first hour, as Kevin was saying, for Northamptonshire. But then Liam Dawson, with mixture of skillful bowling and certainly I think the first two wickets were down, I would say, largely to batter error. Rob Keogh, I think, was got out. It is Mason Crane, the leg spinner, so it'll spin from both ends. And he's going to be bowling to safe Zabe with a full short leg and a slip short cut away, attempted to cut away by Zabe. Doesn't manage to beat the man at backward point and there's no run. Yeah, good to see Mason Crane back in a Hampshire shirt. Apart from a couple of full tosses, he's bowled quite steadily actually. First time he's had a bowl in this game into his fifth. Yeah, a couple of full tosses, one put away for four and one for six by Safe Zabe. Round the wicket comes Crane, flights that one up. Zabe, watchful in defence, plays it back down the pitch. Crane fielding off his own bowling and there's no run. Gorgeous morning here at the Aegeus Bowl, but just lost the sun for the time being. High fluffy clouds around, but perfect day for cricket. Is Crane in again, flighted up and driven on the bounce by Zabe up to the bowler himself who fields. Mid on fairly deep, mid off a little bit tighter. There's a little bit of insurance for Crane with a man sweeping on the extra cover boundary. Backward point, man on the 45 as well, and a short mid wicket wide outside the off stump from Crane. Zabe not to be tempted they'll certainly get one more over in after this before lunch a couple of balls left in this one Zabe bat raised faces this next ball from Crane driven on the full and it's gone past the bowler he's going to get a single and that's all he'll get John Turner coming round from mid on fields and in throwing that one in finishes up on his back side I think he's okay Zabe goes to 35, 36, Northamptonshire to 143 for five. So still a long, long way behind. 168 runs adrift with potentially all of today and all of tomorrow available for Hampshire to wrap this one up. Here's Crane bowling to James Sales, who's on the back foot, drops it down at his feet for Fletcher Middleton to retrieve at forward short leg. And that's the end of another over. Eight to Sales, 36 to save Zabe, 143 for five. Crane's now bowled five overs, no wicket for 15. It'll be Dawson to continue at the far end, the pavilion end, with what could be, depending on which timepiece they're going on, the last over before lunch. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, just to say that uh, also in that uh, Southern Premier League game going on on the nursery ground, Gareth Berg, formerly of this parish and now of Northamptonshire, is playing for Limington in that game. I can't. See, the scoreboard hasn't moved, or the scorecard I'm looking at, the online scorecard hasn't moved on. So there's just been a wicket because there was a certain amount of um, ah, was it? Yes, kerfuffle. There we go. 
we'll get a good view at lunchtime because we'll walk past it. As Dawson comes in then outside the off stump and that's comfortably left alone by Zabe. Dawson has three for 41 into his uh, 13th uh, over. It's been the odd bit of turn for uh, all the spinners used in this game, but really has been the only odd bit. Dawson, of course, is bowling this a bit of rough into the left-handers. That's just quietly played out on the uh, onside. But it's a slow turn. It's a very dry wicket out there. Not a lot of bounce either. Has to be very patient. Dawson in the game from that pavilion end. Zybes on the back foot. Didn't really turn, so he's just pushing out at that one. As it goes to backward a point, fielded by Joe Weatherly. Hampshire still comfortably in control of this game. The only real doubt is whether it finishes today or tomorrow. It's probably still will finish today. But uh, North Hans proving a little harder second time around to whittle out, and uh, you would have expected that as it played back to uh, the bowler. It was a fairly low watermark, to be perfectly honest, wasn't yeah, it, for the first true. innings? Yeah. yeah, he certainly didn't want a repeat of that. Bowled out for 72 in their second innings in their last game, 56 in their first innings here. You and 63 in the second innings against Hampshire a month ago at Wanty Road. That's right, yeah, it's, it's too many, isn't it? It's too much. Dawson's round the wicket to Zabe this time, who off the back foot works it out to mid wicket. Fielded by Nick Gubbins, and this will probably be the last ball of the morning session, having a slightly extended session after losing a bit of play yesterday afternoon with a prolonged rain shower. Dawson in again, Zabe on the back foot, plays that out towards mid-wicket, and that should be lunch. It is lunch, the players make their way off to the far end of the ground. Maiden over there for uh, Liam Dawson, 13 overs, five maidens, three for 41, and Northamptonshire. Uh, at uh, the break, uh, go in. Just lost my scorecard there for a minute. Go in at one. 143. Three for five. That's right, yes. With Zabe not out, 36. James Sales not out, eight. Dawson with all three wickets this morning has uh, three for uh, 41. And as I say, that deficit is still 168. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, Melissa. We'll uh, be back. Uh, in just under 40 minutes' time with more live commentary.
Welcome back to the Aegeus Bowl, where we are about to get underway the afternoon session on day three of this County Championship Division 1 match between Hampshire and uh, Northamptonshire. The uh, state of uh, play is that uh, Northamptonshire uh, following on are 143 for five. They still trail Hampshire in the game by 168 runs. So Hampshire... Uh, very much looking to take these last five Northamptonshire wickets as uh, quickly as possible. It could be all over this session. It might go into the evening session. We shall have to wait and see. Um, Zabe is 36 not out. He's had a reasonably good game in a game where the Northamptonshire batters have struggled. 36 not out to go with his 29 in the first innings. And James Sales is eight not out. Three wickets that fell this morning. Uh, for an hour, it was OK for North Ants, showing some fight as Sam Whiteman and Rob Keogh batted through till about midday, where Sam Whiteman then went for 45, Ricardo Vosconcelos for one, Rob Keogh for 34. All of the wickets falling to uh, Liam Dawson, who currently has three for 41 from 13 overs. Uh, your commentary team this afternoon, a little later, we'll hear from uh, TMS commentator and Gloucestershire County player now, uh, Melissa Storey. Uh, but uh, right now, it's myself, Kevin James, and from BBC Northampton, it is uh, Andrew Rad. Afternoon, Kevin. Afternoon, everybody. Yes, Northamptonshire clinging on. And, uh, well, this is, in terms of this season anyway, slightly danger zone for uh, for safe say, because 36 not out here, which is actually his high score of the season. Um, his last four innings before this one, 33, 35, 26, 29, and now 36 not out. So just needs to keep going back for as long as possible and hope that somebody can stay with him and it's going to be Mohammed Abbas to start proceedings from this end here he comes then and he bowls the sails he's wrapped on the pad he's out first ball after lunch stuck on the crease it kept low it nipped back and sails perishes for eight and 143 for five at lunch is now 143 for six horrible start I think we could give that out from here couldn't we I strongly suspect him just looking at it in real time obviously we're not behind the line so we'll have a little look on the replay but uh, it just looked it looked right didn't he see we haven't got the replay because we haven't got um, Kyle Abbott in the box as we did this morning and whatever Kyle says obviously goes uh, here we go I think we are going to see it now well, it's, couldn't really tell from that but yeah it looked as you say he didn't go anywhere he was just caught on the crease and his, his feet just were not moving at all and you can't here we, no, you can't do that to uh, Mohamed Abbas and uh, Sales goes and well I strongly suspect our chances of being here at tea time are, are, are waning fast Tom Taylor will hang around more than capable of doing that shared a, a big partnership with uh, Sam Whiteman in his match saving innings down at um, Taunton and actually did a you know his role in that was absolutely crucial they put on 80 used up for 25 30 overs uh, so he will hang around um, but as far as well I don't think we should expect too much of Jordan Buckingham, Jack White and Alex Russell, to be perfectly honest. So I think Hampshire are, are sniffing the points here. Well, again, for me, for the second uh, time in this game, James Sales, I don't want to pick him out uh, for any particular attention. But, you know, for me, you've got to look to get forward Yeah. on this wicket, which is keeping a bit low at times. You know, Amir Bass, that's very much a loosener for him. Not the quickest anyway. You've got to look to get forward. Trying to play that off the pitch like that, that's... It's not really on, I'm afraid. And in the first innings, it was a bit of a lazy defensive shot. They play against his dad an awful lot. And, uh, it, you know, his dad was a little bit more positive in defence than that. And, you know, he, he's got the potential to be a very good player. He's only 20 years of old. He bowled quite nicely in this game. But there's obviously one or two areas where he can just work on. And that's that's one, that's for sure. Here's that Abbas then bowls. And that's short. And that's a good ball. <laughs> Taylor ducks underneath that. That just ballooned off the pitch. It's and uh, it just kicked a bit as well, didn't it? With it a bit did, and it, well, it went into the gloves with a very yeah. satisfying thwack into uh, Ben Brown's gloves. And, well, yeah, just letting uh, Tom Taylor know he's around. Oh, he's but a lot more bounces, does Mr Abbas. Well, that's, but that is, as you say, just the start North Amateur didn't want. Yeah, if, they had to, if they were going to have any chance of maybe just seeing out the day, I think they needed uh, James Sales to be in there for a while. Yeah. Here he is again, then runs away from us and bowls to Taylor. And it's wide of the stump. Just comes back a fraction, but it's too wide. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, again, in this innings, you know, several players have just 
contributed a little bit to their own downfall. Vasconcelos getting right across his stumps, trying to sweep Dawson bold round his legs. Sam Whiteman driving at the ball at Dawson. He probably shouldn't really have been driving it and didn't really show any inclination of doing that in his previous 93 no. balls, where actually I thought he was very tight and in fact only drove at balls that were right up there and yet inexplicably he's trying to drive a ball which bounced well in front of him. Just went through the gate. A bass bowls, that's come back a fraction. Ben Brown doesn't take it up cleanly as it dies on him. It's going for four byes. Yeah, in fact, the uh, I mean Rob Key, I think, was got out, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But W didn't, just kept a little bit low on him um, and just hit him bang in front. But I think he'd, it was a really good effort from Rob Key, I was saying, and, and, you know, made a bit of a point, bit of a statement, 113 balls. 34 runs and decided he was going to sell himself dearly, which is just what Northamptonshire wanted today and what you would expect from from your senior pro. But, um, yeah, overall, there's not a huge amount of positive points to take out of this game so far, but it's not over yet. It's not. 164 runs deficit. Yes, forward is Taylor. Inside edge onto the pad there as it goes back to um, Abbas. Tom Taylor, another one on the pair. Ooh. Just Azad is the only one, I think, I'm right in saying, with the pair so far. Yeah, didn't face in the first innings, run out. <laughs> Only faced a few balls in the second. I don't think it's a game he's going to remember no, for too long. I don't think so. I don't think too many of these Northamptonshire players. In fact, it's a game you don't want to remember. You just want to move on. Just move on. It's always about the next game as that's full. That's driven. That's half stopped. I th he thought that was going to be his first runs of the game. Great stop Ian Holland diving to his left. And that'll be the end of the first over after lunch. And Moabas has picked up his first wicket in this innings. 12 overs, six maidens, one for 11. And it's that time of the day also, that time of the week, when uh, we're keeping an eye on about three games at once. Because, of course, we've got the game over to our left, the Limington, including Gareth Berg against the Hampshire Academy. I'm keeping half an eye on my club side, who have <laughs> made a good start in their, uh, their Prem game today. But uh, hopefully they can keep it up. And obviously... Focusing mainly on here, it is going to be Liam Dawson to continue from the far end, the pavilion end after lunch. Certainly Hampshire's bowling hero this morning. Bowled beautifully, picked up three wickets to four. Whiteman, Vasconcelos and Keogh. And he's now going to be bowling to the left-handed safe save. The forward short leg and a slip. Over the wicket comes Dawson, bowls to Zabe who is forward dropping it down in front of him and, and certainly as long as Tom Taylor is there there's no need for Zabe to do what he had to do in the first innings with the tail in and try and fashion strokes and just try and get something on the board he, at the moment he can just continue to bat properly goes for the sweep which is his favoured option goes down to deep backward square and they come through for a single takes Zabe up to 37 and Northampton to 148 for six. For Taylor, we have a slip and a forward short leg still, then a backward point, a backward square leg, cover about two thirds of the way back to the boundary, a short extra cover on the drive, mid off fairly deep and a mid on a bit tighter. Here's Dawson in again outside the off stump and Taylor doesn't play at it, which leaves the man at deep square in front of the tunnel down to our left. Where he's able to have a chat with the ground staff. Here's Dawson. Round the wicket to Taylor, who's pushing forward, stretching forward, pushing it out on the offside. And there's no run. Fielded there by Nick Gubbins coming in from cover. Bright sunshine now, gorgeous afternoon. It's a lovely morning here. Ground looks a picture. And here's Dawson in again and this has just short of a length and it has Taylor on the back foot punching it up to mid off and there's no run flags of the respective counties flying at the far end of the ground just above their respective dressing rooms is Dawson in again bowling to Taylor is stretching forward pushes it down the pitch Fletcher Middleton for forward short leg retrieves and that's the end of Liam Dawson's first over of the afternoon. One run off it, 148 for six. Zabe is 37, Taylor yet to get off the mark. And Dawson's figures, 14 overs, five maidens, three for 42. You know, I, I guess in the aftermath of this, whenever, it, whenever the end comes, that I don't think it's any coincidence that the 
three players, and I'm including Zabe in this as well, that have actually scored runs, have all had a method and they've all had a, a plan that you can clearly see. You know, with Sam Whiteman, it was very much, wasn't it, anything straight. It was the minimum of movement, just tucked it away on the leg side for singles. There was good drive when the ball was very, very much pitched up. And that's what he was doing. He was doing nothing else. And everything else was just dead bat. But those were his main scoring shots, tucking away on the leg side when it was straight. And then some lovely crisp drives for the offside when it was very full. Here's a bass bowls and he's having a little nibble outside the off stump there, uh, Zabe. Clear technique, and actually when he made a mistake, he was out. Rob Keogh, great stride. Very, very good stride getting forward. Probably has got forward as far forward as anybody uh, in the game. So Sam Whiteman, 93 balls for his 45. 113 ball, 34 for Rob Keogh. And Zabe out there, who's very much you know, quite busy at the crease and sweeping the spinners. And it's obviously a thing that he does. And he's done it all very well. Those are the three players you can see with plans and have scored runs. Everybody else just looks a little sort of, yeah. you're not really sure what they're trying to do. And I'm not even sure they are. Uh, really, here's Abbas, Ford is at Sabe, I and mean, you take Visconsolis, you said he doesn't play the sweep shot no. very much, he, there he is sweeping uh, Liam Dawson uh, and he's out. Emilio Gay, well, you know, he hasn't played a lot of cricket, so maybe and you I think can that, forgive him and I think that's the Yeah, and I think that's the problem with Emilio, he's such a talented player and he proved that last year, but he's just, he's undercooked, he's short of cricket, he's, um, he's come back a couple of games and he's, he hasn't had any time at the crease. Yeah, so that's fair enough, you know, so... But, you know, sales again, you know, just yeah. tentative in defence, you know. That, so, you know, as I say, it's no coincidence that guys have scored runs in this second innings are guys with clear plans. Here's Abbas Bowles and, oh, he's very nearly edged that one. Again, that's a good ball, just angling in. It's not straightening as much as it did yesterday, or it isn't at the moment, but that one just shaped fractionally straight as they push forward. And it's a pity with James Sales because he, he played so well at Taunton, made 57 down there and uh, managed to shepherd Northamptonshire to their first and so far only batting bonus point of the season um, and, and proved, you know, talking afterwards on, on, on commentary, that he's the sort of player that tends to thrive on responsibility. Um, but, yeah, hasn't been seen to best advantage in this game, I think it's fair to no, say, with, it's the, with the bat one, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's one game. It's one game that I've seen. Oh, he's having a little flash outside the off stump there, Zabe. He wouldn't have been too happy if he'd got out playing that shot. I say this is, in terms of his scores this season, this is this is the danger area. This is where he's, he's got, well now five times running to pass the sort of the mid twenties and and hasn't yet. This is now his highest score, that you know his highest championship score of the season. So, and again, he's he's a better player than that without a you know without a doubt as as you've seen I know before in, in yeah. both championship and uh, and white ball as well. There are so many players around the circuit that are vulnerable, and this is through the ages, this isn't just now, but you know, once they get to 20 or 30, they actually become vulnerable again, because actually they think when they've got to 20 or 30, they can play slightly differently as that's pushed back to the bowler. They think they've got there. So, oh, now, now I'll, I'll kick on, I'll do this and that. But actually they forget how they got there. Well, I thought it was really interesting last night talking to, um, to North Hampshire's head coach, John Sadler. We did touch on this earlier, but if you're just joining us, that he was citing James Vince as a really good example of, of playing Red Bull cricket. You know, he said he, he's a wonderful, stylish player, all the shots, but he, he just got his head down. He knew what he had to do, and it was, you know, 95 off 180 balls or something, but it did a terrific job for his side. Certainly did. Here's a bass again in the sunshine. Short, outside off stump, and Zabe practices the cut over the slips after the ball's into the gloves of Ben Brown, and that's the end of the over. Another maiden for uh, a bass. He always clocks up the maidens. 11 maidens from 13 overs, 1 for 11. And to be fair, I mean, you know, we, 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 there's a lot of discussion at the moment surrounding Zach Crawley and whether he should be in the England side and so on. But uh, when he was playing for Kent down at Canterbury in Northampton's first match of the season in, in conditions that were not easy to bat in, you know, he played that. He made 90, just looking at my notes, 91 off 171 balls. So very similar innings to, to James Vince's. And in what was quite a low-scoring game, which Kent won, it was almost the difference between the, the two sides. Here's Dawson starting a fresh over to Taylor, who is struck on the pad and out. Didn't seem to go anywhere again. Just got a half a stride in. A long, well, a long think about it before putting the finger up, and Taylor doesn't look monumentally happy, but he's got to go. He's LBW to Dawson. It's a fourth wicket for him, and Northamptonshire teetering on the brink now at 148 for seven. He just looked at his bat as he tucked it under his arm to walk off there. I don't know if that was a 
A little bit of a sign to suggest that he thought he may just have got a little tickle onto the pads. Otherwise, that's pretty close, that's for sure. Well, he bagged them as well. So yeah. Taylor's, uh, Taylor's got a pair. So we've had Northamptonshire have had three pairs in two matches. Because Ke uh, Keogh bagged them at, uh, at Wantage Road. Azad and Taylor both bagged a pair in this match. Well... Just looking to see if we can uh, catch a catch a glimpse of that. He's oh dear, he's not happy. This is almost as slow a walk off as Ricardo Vasconcelos, and that is saying something. We need a taxi, <laughs> taxi for Taylor. <laughs> need he to is, get him off. JCB need to dig him out. He is taking a very very long time to get off, and I, I just hope, and I, I, I you know it's it's not it's not for me or for any of us to say, but I just hope from you know Safe Zabe's point of view, he doesn't just try and have a slog and. You know, Jordan Buckingham can hang around. He proved that. He, but he batted for, um, was in for, 66 balls uh, down at Taunton. Uh, so he can, you know, he can play. He can hold an end up. And I just hope at the moment, at least, Abe just doesn't try and do anything too fancy and you know gets out for 37. And just it's just a shame. He's a he's a better player than that. But he, at the moment, I suppose it's the the trouble batting down at, at number six in a side that's struggling, is that you finish up too often having to try and shepherd the tail or try and just prolong the innings a bit get what you can without a huge amount of confidence in the individuals at the other end um, and it's a it's a shame for Zabe because as we say he's a better player than that but 148 for seven four for Dawson and it is going to be Jordan Buckingham to face his first ball once again a silly mid off and a slip I think Tom Taylor has just about got back to the dressing room, but only just. Here is Dawson. One more for his Pfeiffer. Around the wicket, bowls to Buckingham, who just rides the bounce nicely and gets off the mark straight away, running it down to backward point for a single. Mason Crane trots back from backward point to retrieve, so Buckingham's off the mark. And Northamptonshire 149 for seven. Having lost two wickets already since lunch, went into the break at 143 for five, lost sales for eight, Taylor for naught. One for Abbas, one for Dawson. Here's Dawson in again, bowls to save, save. That's turned, bounced. And, a, well, Ben Brown was scrabbling around on the floor. Whether he actually held it and whether it actually took the glove, I'm not sure. It turned and bounced. Ooh. I think he might think have he might just have had just it and the elbow it, yeah. hit the ground. I think it probably did take Flicked the glove. It, it did. It was, uh, it was a brute of a ball, I have to say, from Torson. And this time, Zabe comes down the pitch, drives up to short mid-off, and there's no run. 149 for seven. We've been saying throughout the day so far, this dry pitch is just a little bit of help for the spinners. Dawson in particular has exploited such help as there is very, very skillfully. Swept away by Zabe for four. So he goes into the 40s for first time this season. Goes just behind square. 150 up for Northamptonshire. Greeted with rapturous applause around the ground. 153. There's a ripple. Sympathetic applause. Sympathetic applause, yes. <laughs> Beautifully put. Uh, 153 for seven. Zabe to 41 of 68 balls so well he's done a decent job here how much longer will he resist the temptation just to have a bit of a swing with the tail enders in well he's nudged that past forward short leg it was dangerously close to Fletcher Middleton under the lead and he goes out for a single so he pink well he keeps the bowling anyway which is Something as far as he's concerned and Northamptonshire are concerned. It takes Zabe to 42. Buckingham is 1. Northamptonshire 1. 54 for 7. Dawson 15 overs 5. Maidens 4 for 48. And Northamptonshire's 20-year wait for a championship victory at this ground, I think we can fairly safely say, will be extended for at least another season. Barring something very, very strange. I tell you what, if it is, I'd l I'm glad I'm here to see it. <laughs> yes. Well, just need another 157 to make Hampshire bat again. You never know. They were bowled out for 57 here last year. You never know. Get 50-odd in front. 
Could be a good game. Here's Mohamed Abbas short. And Zabe ducks underneath that one. Didn't get up particularly high. Uh, that one. I'm just looking at the live table at the moment. Should Hans win this? I mean, that's, I say should. I think it's probably... Uh, they will move from third to second. Warwickshire not playing this week, so they will go above them, but they will have played a game more than Warwickshire. But they will be behind Surrey, and we are so used to saying that <laughs> around these parts over the last year and a bit. Hampshire. Well, in fact, actually last year there was a lot of times when uh, it, they kept leapfrogging each other because Hampshire would win in three days yeah. and then Surrey would win late on the fourth. So they kept leapfrogging until the very end. Oh, has he edged that one very close? That's a great delivery. Pitched up, drew him forward, well, went past the outside. Edge. If memory serves, when Hampshire beat Northamptonshire here in that match, the, the, the famous rain over Telegraph Wood game, I think that put Hampshire top of the table. Uh, then Northamptonshire went to back to Wantage Road and drew mm. with Surrey, mm. um, which kept the thing alive for a, for a little bit longer. Yes, it did. Yeah, good memory, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the few times that Hampshire actually sort of held on to the lead for more than about a few days, but it was nip and tuck until penultimate week of the season. And it all went horribly wrong with two defeats as Zay pushes forward. Nice straight bat, back to the bowler. Yes, 54 for seven here. North Hampshire were down at, um, at Taunton last year and heard, um, heard that Gloucestershire had won, which helped both Northamptonshire and uh, Somerset in terms of staying in Division 1 and I think it got the biggest round of applause of the season mm -hmm. which for Somerset crowd to be applauding Gloucestershire was uh, was quite something went against the grain a bit I think <laughs> Abbas runs away from us to save, save drives the outside edge, in fact actually it's more than that, that's a good shot, it's in front of square and that's gone for four, that's a lovely drive, I just thought there was a little bit of a hint of a Outside edge, which would have taken it a little squarer than that, but uh, I did him a disservice. Lovely shot. He timed that beautifully, didn't he? It, it was uh, it was just an effort. It did look like just a, just a bit of a push, but he, he obviously timed to perfection, and I think he's a very, very talented lad. He, he is. really is. Yeah. Well, I mean, la last year he was very he was within, I think, 10 runs or 9, 10 runs of scoring a, a century in all three competitions. Okay. He got a Championship 100, a One Day Cup 100, and a 90 in the T20. Okay. He's on 46 here. As the bass comes in again and bowls. Oh, I think he's had a little play at that one as well. And that's just kicked a little bit off the length and the bass just stands there with a double teapot on. I think he was trying to just work that down to third, which is, if I'm honest, probably not the right shot to be doing, especially when the ball's straightening on you like that. But uh, he's got away with it. I think bass definitely frustrated on that one. I can uh, I can reveal that Tom Taylor is now back in the dressing room. <laughs> yeah, and and if it was a little nick on it, uh, then fair enough. And and again, when things aren't going your way, yeah. these little decisions that you think it's not quite right, they do seem to come in these situations. Well, oh, that's bounced nastily, and that's wrapped him on the fingers, and that's hurt. That has probably jammed the thumb or something like that onto the handle. Mohammed, Mohammed Abbas, to his credit, is straight up to the batter and just ask him how he is, puts his arm around him. But that's hurt. Anything that jags the finger, jams the finger onto the bat handle is very, very painful. It doesn't matter how much padding you've got on. And he ha it happened to him yesterday, didn't it? Mm. Almost exactly the same. And, uh, well, I think the Northamptonshire physio, Nick Allen, is uh, might be trotting out to uh, have a little look at this. He was in a certain amount of discomfort yesterday and there was quite a long delay. And Northamptonshire will just hope against hope that it's not anything serious enough that's going to keep him out of the T20. So they had enough of that last year when Ricardo Vasconcelos uh, suffered a, a finger injury in the uh, last round of championship matches against uh, Kent at Northampton and finished up missing the entire T20 blast and only coming back actually for the, uh, the last knockings of the season. But I think the physio, no, he's been he's just squatting on the boundary ropes. They presumably get this over with, this over, over with, and then they'll uh, perhaps have another look at it. So here is Liam Dawson starting his 16th over. And he's trapped him on the crease. He's got to be out. He is. I could give him that one out from here. Dawson, uh, Buckingham playing back. Again, I think it was the arm ball. It was very, very similar to Rob Keogh's. And that's a five-wicket haul for Liam Dawson. 
15 overs and one ball, five maidens, five for 48. Buckingham goes LBW to Liam Dawson. And applause around the ground for the Fifer. I didn't see if Dawson brandished the ball to the crowd. Perhaps he will when they leave the field after Hampshire have won, which I suspect is going to be in the not-too-distant future. Now, Buckingham goes for one, LBW to Dawson and Northamptonshire. The end is nigh, 158 for eight. Buckingham, LBW, Dawson for one, having faced just two balls. And quite incredibly, only the sixth time that uh, Liam Dawson's taken five wickets. That does surprise me. Yeah, in uh, first-class uh, cricket. That uh, comfortably is best figures of the season bowl well last week at uh, Kent on a wicket that offered nothing to anybody. Uh, all the uh, wickets since lunch have been LBW. Uh, are you going to stay on until the end, uh, Mr. Red? Uh, would you like to, or are you no, happy no, no, to come no? No, no, no. I shall, I shall come off and uh, and make way yeah, for, uh, for Melissa. I feel Melissa's made all this way. Absolutely. No, no, that's that fine. In fact, we'll take we'll take the opportunity now while uh, you sure while the the new batter comes out and uh, I'll hand you over to yeah. Melissa if I don't get back on air before at the end of this match which is very possible thanks Kev for your hospitality as ever thanks to Hampshire County Cricket Club always a pleasure to come down here and uh, well one day we might give you a game <laughs> yes I, I've, I've heard all that before and then the next time you come down we lose in about two days uh, but it's always about the next game it's never about the current game although it is but as soon as this game's over you have your post-mortem, you do whatever you need to do, and then you think about the next game. Never look back. Those players that look back are the ones that never make it. Unlike mm -hmm. Melissa, who's uh, a T20 women's <laughs> county winner with Gloucestershire. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling good after lunch. I had a fantastic Thai red curry. Um, and I've now got the T20 blast opener in front of me on my phone. So ah. I've got two entertaining games. Well, this one hasn't started yet, but the one in front of us is very entertaining. Here's Dawson outside the off stump, and White, I think, withdrew the bat. Give him the benefit of the doubt there. I, I can't believe that's only his sixth five wicket hole. Incredible, isn't it? In in red ball. Yes. Has he got any, any white ball fifers? Uh, I can look. You do the overall look. Dawson bowls, dropped down off the back foot by White. And I remember you saying in Northamptonshire's first innings that. It was quite surprising to see Jack White at number 10 and what kind of reflection that is on, on Alex Russell at 11 as he's prodding that one into the offside for no run. I mean, certainly both of these teams in this game have had potentially longer tails than they used to. Yes. That's Dawson. Bowls with two slips in place, punching off the back foot is white. He's quite tall and able to get on top of the bounce this time. Finds the fielder at extra cover. Just two wickets away now. Have you found us? Yes, uh, they're both long tails. Uh, one Pfeiffer in list A, one Pfeiffer in T20s. Dawson bowls, low full toss, smoked Ooh. over his head by white for four. Well, we were saying that Northamptonshire number 10 and 11 will potentially... Not the strongest of batters, but a few more shots like that and I'll be entertained. End of the over, 162 for eight. And the focus of this next one, I guess, you, you know, the, the only kind of happiness here for, for Northamptonshire is the form showed by Safe Sabin in this match. You know, he's on 46 now. He's one shot away from a, a half century touch wood. And as I say, he showed signs in the first innings. He, he had to almost throw away his wicket in the end because he was running out of partners and just wanted to get as many runs on the board for Northamptonshire as possible. But it's one of their players just showing a little bit of form. And, of course, Rob Keogh put in a good effort as well at the top of the order. Here's Mohamed Abbas then, round the wicket to Zabe. Forward. Comfortably forward on that one as he pushes it out into the covers. Yeah, and I was saying, I don't think you were around at the time, uh, uh, Melissa, but uh, you know, it's no coincidence the three players that have scored runs all have you know have all had a plan, haven't they? Keo well forward on the front foot, definite trying to do that, and you know that negated a lot of the balls, uh, a lot of the bowling, and he got 34 off 113. Sam Whiteman with his technique, you know, some good crisp drives mixed in with some lovely just deft touches on the leg side, and Zabe as well, some good sweeps off the spinners, and everybody else just didn't really seem to have a plan. There's, uh, Bass comes in. That's flicked away by Zabe. Down to a fine leg. He wants two if he can, but it's gone a bit too quick. I think that's Turner up there at the far end. 
163 for eight. He's on 47 now, Zabe. Exactly. And it's not about, you know, playing into this one mould as a team. It's about, as an individual, knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Northamptonshire will be disappointed in this, not only because, you know, they've put forward two quite weak batting performances in terms of the shots they've been playing. It, it's felt like they've been throwing away their wickets at times. But there's been a lot of runs scored this morning, actually. It's a good batting wicket. The ball is not moving sideways at all. So, you know, if they had been in a more dominant position, this would have been a fantastic day for batting. Yeah, agreed. Short, slightly short and White just off the back foot, works it behind square on the offside. No, yeah. you're right. Well, 93 runs scored in that morning session. I know there was an extra 10 minutes, but it's still pretty good going, isn't it? It is, and we've seen much trickier sessions here earlier in the season, as I said earlier, when the ball was doing a lot and, you know, you've got a pretty depleted Hampshire attack, not to take anything away from from John Turner, who's done a fantastic job in this game. But, you know, you haven't got Kyle Abbott and you haven't got James Fuller. Two players have done incredibly well this season so far. There was a massive opening here for them. That's right. Full white work set up towards Minon. Thinks about a single, but Dawson quickly across. You're right. I think, I think again, in the aftermath, and you say, well, hang on a minute. Hampshire's bowling wasn't even at full strength. And we've still suffered this, uh, which will be, I'm afraid, a huge defeat again. Which is kind of, you know, shows how disappointing it is from a, a Hampshire perspective to, to spin this the other way that, you know, there has been two losses for Hampshire this year and a, a lot of it you would say is because of their, the weakness in, in their batting. A lot of more of, the, well, a few more of the batters are coming into, you know, showing signs of form in these last two weeks. Certainly are. So Bass just goes past the outside edge of White. It's good to see Liam Dawson scoring runs. You know, fortunately for Hampshire's T20 title, it seems to be at the right time for the T20 blast. And, you know, that could be a sign of things to come. I walked past Ben McDermott when I was coming round and he looked like he was off for a net session as well. So the overseas are here. It's exciting. That's good. But, you know, both of these sides out there in the middle have struggled with batting at various points across the season. And when you look to the teams at the top, essentially when you look at Surrey, you know, they've managed to balance both disciplines remarkably well. Yeah, comfortably at the top again, Surrey. That's pretty much standard for them. That's beating them outside the off stump again. <laughs> Abu Dabas just walking down, looking at the pitch. Just seeing where that ball bounced. Kept a little low, uh, that one. He has one for 16 from 15. Incredible figures, even when he's not taking wickets. The game goes nowhere when that man is bowling. 163 for eight. I was intrigued. You said he had one 50 over. Or list A Pfeiffer and one T20 Pfeiffer Liam Dawson. What games were they in? Oh, I'm right. usually I'm the stat guy. You are, you and are. you're the stories guy. But we're going to swap it round. I'm story, oh, you're stat. You could have given me about six days warning on that one, Mel. Are you just working out where the search bar is? Do you want me to show you? I Do know you're on. a granddad now, but <laughs> I wondered when you were going to get that in. <laughs> I'm surprised it's lasted this long. It had to be natural. <laughs> Liam Dawson then <laughs> bowling to Zabe, who's sweeping hard into the gap on the leg side. It brings up a magnificent half century. He's been a lone figure, really, of resistance in this Northamptonshire innings. 51 of 78 balls. And I mean, even a strike rate of 65, it's such a good, you know, he, he's shown how good this pitch is to bat on and bringing up that half century with a sweep shot i mean i, I don't think i've seen someone play the sweep shot so comfortably in mm. quite a while there's not been a single top edge or or up issue so good at getting on top of the bounce which is sometimes quite difficult from liam dawson just rolling his wrists on it to get it through the gaps in the field this time he's well forward pushes into the vacant area in the covers allows him to gently jog through for a single once, sorry. Oh, the score moves on to 168 for eight. One stat I can find quite quickly. Oh he's God. eighth. Eighth time he's passed 50 in first class cricket. So Are you can't. finding me my Liam Dawson Fifers? Oh, listen chop, to chop. you. Listen to you. <laughs> what do we pay you for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Field creeps in. <laughs> As Liam Dawson into white and it's bowled him. Liam Dawson. His sixth wicket. And you can just hear from the crowd how brilliant he's been today. That was a spinning delivery. Not much 
White could really do there it pitched and turned from the rough jerked in at quite a dramatic angle and White didn't know what to really do with that one it's nine wickets down now for Northamptonshire and Liam Dawson well, if he gets one more, how many times has... Oh, I'm throwing more at you. Has he ever got a well, seventh? I was just going to look. I was just going to look that uh, he got figures last week at Chelmsford. Uh, big figures. So I'm just going to have a quick look at those and I'll come back to you. All right? Okay. That's, that's allowed. I'll allow it. Of course, if you know the answer, then you can get in touch at Solent Sport or SolentCricket at gmail.com. Have a race with Kev if you think you can beat him. It's not I, hard. I just hope Dave Allen or Tigger Miles are listening, or um, or my dad uh, actually. Or your dad, yeah. Is it? Do you think? Hope he's listening, please, Mister Mister John Paul Story. Please help me out. Alex Russell coming into the middle for Northamptonshire, the final batter. And I guess after this game, oh, he's done it. I'm going to let you do it. You're so excited. Come on. Well, last year at Essex. He got seven for 68. Do you know there hmm. that Rad has said that about one second before you, so he beat you? He always likes getting him. He always wants to get him before me. And I love how you've both not used the internet. You've used a little poly wallet full of notes, which looks like it's dating. Have you got, have you got a filing cabinet with all of those in, dating back all the yeah, years? Yeah, it goes back to 1868. Oh, impressive. <laughs> Um, Radders is, believe me, he's got 100 times Radders actually does. <laughs> Dawson bowling then to Russell, who's defending cautiously down the ground. Just wait until I introduce you to the internet. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> I say that as I was not prepared myself to search that up because it would take too long. Dawson's bowling and a very unconventional defensive shot this time from Russell, who... Plays it nicely, but finishes the position with his legs spread quite wide apart. It was quite face on, but he's just got to survive here. And I don't know whether in the next over we're going to see Zabe just trying to steal the strike. He works this one round the corner. They choose to run through for the single. Score moves on to 169 for nine. And Northamptonshire. Well, there's still a deficit of 142 runs. So at this point, if you're Zabe, you know, are you going to face four, try and get a single and see how long you can do that? Or is it really, would you be more inclined to go out in style, hit a few boundaries, see how high you can get your own individual score? Because they're not going to win from no, this point. No, I agree. You know? I mean, I know of many players in this situation that would literally play for a not out. Now, I don't know, I don't think Zabe, uh, I don't know him, I don't know what he'd do here, but I don't see any point in him having a slog, that's for sure. Here's that Abbas bowls to Russell. I mean, I, in the first innings, I thought Russell looks pretty competent. I mean, as I say, I, I, I don't know why he's batting lower than Jack White. You know, his technique looks a little tighter in the few balls that I've seen them both bat. Certain players prefer 11 to 10, because I know when I've, I've played for my men's side, often me and my friend Lily, we battle out between 10 and 11 and swap each week and I always get a duck when I go in at 10 but I always get like a handy 10 not out when I go in at 11 so I might need to start swapping with ah, her so it's a psychological thing that's, that's short gets underneath that does young Russell is it a psychological thing it's one of those um, what do you call them superstitions maybe or maybe I'm just a bit rubbish I do have a couple superstitions I always try and match my hairband to wh whichever team I'm playing for I think it makes me perform better and this year when playing for Gloucestershire I've got two wickets in every game in every power play but my hair has been in a plait so in the final when my hair fell out of a plait I started panicking oh no. I was like I'm not going to get any wickets here <laughs> so I had to tie it up quickly that's weird isn't it here's a bass forward he is plays it back to the bowler nice full length delivery right so you are superstitious you have got superstitions hair hair mm. orientated superstitions not, I wouldn't be f too freaked out if I saw a black cat at Cow Corner. Not that kind of thing. Or if there was a ladder on the pitch, I'd happily walk under it. <laughs> yeah, I can't say over the years I've seen too many ladders lying around a playing area. One day soon we'll s <laughs> see the first ladder who's a cricketer. <laughs> 169 for nine. It's nearly all over for Northamptonshire as he's playing a missing outside the off stump. Abbas just trying to sneak in a wicket, another wicket before 
the end of uh, the game, which is very, very close now. 142 runs the deficit. I did think at one stage that Northants would get a lot closer than this, but uh, the wickets have just fallen three before lunch. Four afterwards didn't help with James Sell's first ball after lunch. Were you getting your ice cream at that time? Oh, no. So the ice cream van in the corner is not open. Despicable, if you ask me, because as soon as it goes over 15 degrees, everyone should be Agreed. eating ice cream. Abbas bowls, length ball, and Russell put a bit of effort into that, did uh, Abbas. But I went and sat with, with two of my friends, Rosie and Charlotte, in the members area. And it was really nice to be, obviously, in a, a very Hampshire fan-dominated area when the wicket fell. And there was tons of cheers around me, and I felt immersed in the, in the fan zone. Yeah. It was very nice. Good. No, I, th I think you're right. I think, it, I think it, it's a criminal act for um, either a certain temperature that any ice cream van that's not open um, well, for any ice cream van that's not open after the early May, it, there should be a, a, a ticket slapped on the van. I do hope my dad is actually listening to this, not only for the stats. But Has he got an ice cream van? Well, no, I'm no. hoping he'll buy me some ice creams before <laughs> I go home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that's forward. Very full again. Just played back to... <laughs> I didn't have your dad down as an ice cream van salesman to be honest but uh, you never know uh, that's a maiden 16 maidens sorry 8 maidens out of 16 I'll look at the one column 16 overs 8 maidens 1 for 16 I was just trying to picture your dad as an ice cream sir, at the window of a van yeah passing me a, a, a cornet with a flake in yeah he's well I heard the other day when you were at Canterbury yes did you think the 99 was 99p <laughs> no no Rita Green who was on commentary with us former Berkshire women's player uh, did actually say that but uh, she probably said it in a way that it was sounded like it was me it sounded saying like it. you'd got a bit confused <laughs> and you'd offered to buy everyone ice cream thinking it was I 99p did. push back <laughs> past Liam Dawson by Zape who again takes a single on the first ball of the over so he seems quite content here to unless I've got the no it was yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah it was a single taken by Zape and Russell on strike those ice creams actually cost me 12 quid Whoa, cost mm. of living crisis. Mm, Cosy lives. Liam Dawson around the wicket, bowling, <laughs> pushed up ish into the offside and between the two fielders at second slip and again that position which I've forgotten the name of. Who's that? It's a short leg but on the offside. Silly Midoff. Silly Midoff, that's such a silly name. Dawson bowls just past the right hand of Silly Midoff. Have you never said that fielding position ever? No, I've always avoided it because I, I always forget what it's called. I love short leg. I think it's a nice image yes. of someone with a longer leg and then <laughs> one shorter leg. Oh, that one doesn't bounce from Dawson and Russell, who is back on his right leg, looking to cut that one through the offside. It wasn't the smartest of shot selections, but he survives. He's one not out as Dawson bowls, darts one in, and this time he finds the gap, cutting off the back foot, beats the two fielders at point. It's not got enough power on it to get to the boundary, but there could even be, at one point, it looked like there could have been a bit of a run out and some trouble there, as I think Alex Russell was so happy with the shot he'd played. He was looking to come back for three. It's very strange, because we said in this situation, as, as Zabe, safe Zabe, what would you do? And you said, you know, some batters like the Red Inca, as this one beats the outside edge of Russell's bat. End of the over, 172 for nine. But so far, he's taken a single on the first ball of the <laughs> over and safely sat in the non strikes And so I, d I do think he's looking for that little star next to his is, name. Yeah, yeah come, out, come out of the game with something. I mean, with, with his 29 in the first innings and he's 53 now, if he stays unbeaten, you know, he's looking at an average in this game of 80. You know, in a game where Northants have been, let's just say, poor, you know, you can actually look back and say, do you know what, I averaged 80 out of that, so I got something out of that. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes it's not being selfish, but then sometimes this game is selfish, isn't it? And it's a good psychological milestone for you as a player to be able to say, actually, you know, it was a good bowling lineup, but I survived. I got through it unscathed. Agreed. A bass bowls to Zabe. Straight delivery, which is pushed up to mid on, fielded by 
uh, Dawson. Yeah, you know, it's you know, it's, there's two players who've got pairs, so their average is plummeted. You know, but a lot of it is, you know, when it comes to the end of the season, you know, let's just say, let, let's just let's, let's imagine the worst for Northampton. You know, they go down, it's not been a great season and that. You know, when they're looking at contracts, when they're looking at talking about players, you know, and they look at stats, you know, and you've got, you know, a pair, which obviously doesn't help, but then a few other low scores around that. You know, your average nose dives in a season. Sabes down the leg side. He just looks up at the heavens there as he feels he missed out on just nudging that down towards uh, fine leg. Whereas, you know, you come out of it with an average of 80, it helps, improves everything, keeps the season going f as an individual. Because, you know, at the, end of the, at, at the end of the season, it's a tough school. You know, when they're looking to get rid of players and some are borderline because you know, you're thinking, well, shall we get rid of them, shall we keep them? You know, if your average is better than the next person that you're, they're being compared with, you end up staying. And that's what it's all about. That's where the selfishness comes in, unfortunately. That's, that's pushed up to mid-off. And however much people try to gloss over it, is it can be a selfish game. I mean, the best indicator as well that, you know, this, as I've mentioned many times, this is a good batting pitch, particularly in these weather conditions. Hampshire only have two slips in play. You know, there's not actually many close catches. I know they're happy for Zabe to get the single in this situation, but yeah. it has done very little. As I said, depleted Hampshire bowling lineup, and to be able to show, you know, selectors will also look at the context of a game and say it was a good pitch. He was the guy who put in the, the strong innings and exploited that. Agreed. He does pick up. Oh, he very nearly ran his partner out there because they pushed it into covers. I th I'm sure he said yes, and then realised that quickly in was Fletcher Middleton. That's when you say, oh, what did you say, mate? No, I definitely said no. You m there must have been a gust of wind or, <laughs> or you, you heard me incorrectly. <laughs> cool. I, it was a loud call of yes. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Almost barbecued it. Well done, young Alex Russell, for not uh, being committed too much. He's a little deep there, Fletcher Middleton, but not not so deep that it's an obvious single. Here's a bass again with... Penultimate ball of the over. It's wide of off stump, but that's cut away down to third. That'll be four. Not sure if a bass deliberately bowled that ball wide out there, but Sabe was after that. And he moves on to 57, and it's 176 for nine, still 135 behind. Yeah, it was a. What would you? How would you play this though? If you were the, you know, a few runs and the last person in, game's gone. What would you do? I mean, I've I've obviously never been in the situation with a, a kind of four-day game and which I feel is a different thing. I, I guess the only thing he, he may be arguing here, can they still get any batting points? Not in second innings. Not in second innings, uh, then no. <laughs> that's wide of off stump again. It's almost deliberate there from Abbas. End of the over, 176 for nine. I think those last two deliveries from Abbas actually was almost to say, hit a boundary or leave it, because they want to be bowling to Russell in this next day, but particularly with the spinner on and, and Liam Dawson bowling so well. I think, to be honest, I'm... Not a very clever cricketer, so I think I would probably. I I, le I don't have a very good average, so I don't worry about it too much. I love stats as a commentator, but I don't really take my own for what they are. I I don't tend to bat as well as I know I can, so if I look at my average, I'll just feel miserable. But I think in this kind of situation, yesterday I I played in a T20 and I told you my strike rate was 40. In the context of that game, everyone's strike rates, it was a very imbalanced kind of, uh, our women's university team were playing the medics who had some twos and threes players in, for example. It was very imbalanced, but by the end when I was building confidence, I had the chance to try and see if I could get some ramps done and stuff like that. And yes, if it's a good ball, I'd be defending it, but actually I'd be going, what shots can I be playing here as Mason cranes into the attack and Russell just drops it down on the onside. It bounces just before short leg. So I wouldn't be being stupid, but also it's a losing scenario. I think if I was going, OK, Mason Crane's coming on now, would I back myself to do a reverse sweep? I don't know. We've got the right-handed batter. It's the angle going away from you. Less likely Russell, as he gives himself space and snaps that straight to extra cover for no run. But I think I think I would maybe have a bit more fun. But then I don't also have a professional contract on the line. So it's a different story. Maybe if he wants a bit of T20 blast practice, then he'll charge down the wicket next over. As Crane's bowling, edged, caught at second slip. That's the game. And a victorious win for Hampshire. Northamptonshire in complete disarray as they're bowled all out for 176. And it means that 
Wow, that's an innings and 135, isn't it? Wow, scoreboard's gone. Yeah, I think it's an innings and 135, which is uh, a huge, huge margin to go with the uh, innings and 270 run. I will just announce this as well because I've. I was messaging my friend Charlotte, who I mentioned was in the members area, and we all put bets on what time this game would be over, and I said 2.38. Oh, my and God, on the, on the dot. There you go, well done. This is why I'm the expert. So a very, very big win, and pleasing from a Hampshire point of view that uh, Mason Crane got a wicket right at the end there, and uh, Zaib again, justifiably, left not out at the end, 57. Definitely, I mean... It was a fantastic innings from him. Um, deserved that not out at the end to come out here and, and to play on the wicket in its true value. You know, he played his shots, but he was sensible as well. And it's, I mean, looking at the scorecard, really, 13 from from Gay, a uh, duck from Azad, Whiteman, 45 before a complete lapse of judgment where he was bowled by Dawson. And once Dawson kind of got into the rhythm of things, the wickets just kept falling. Keo LBW for 34. And beyond Zabe, then, every other batter got a single-figure score. You know, Northamptonshire will have a lot to talk about at the end of this game. They'll be disappointed with this game. They'll be disappointed with the whole season going forward. They, they have a break now. They have an opportunity to, to recoup and focus on a different format of things. But, you know, the second half of their season and uh, with the championship kind of having a little, you know, spell in June and then later on in the season, it's going to be about survival for them now. Can they come back after after a few rounds of the blast and actually, you know, go, we need to be staying up in, in Div 1 at this rate. We need to turn things around because they're a squad and they're a team full of so much talent and some brilliant young players. They just haven't clicked in this in this first half of the season. So a lot of questions for them. But as you say, for Hampshire, a lot of good signs from this game with Abbott and, and uh, Fuller missing. Their bowling attack still did the job. It, it was it was brilliant and great to see John Turner get a go. But I mean, for me, the standout is Dawson. To see him in the runs and in the wickets, a, a, a inform Liam Dawson makes your team four times better. That's for sure. Six for 61 off uh, 18 overs for uh, Liam Dawson. Fantastic uh, stuff from him on a wicket, which at times did uh, give him a, a bit of uh, help. And as I say, his uh, best figures since his uh, seven wickets last year at Chelmsford. Seven for 68. And uh, at the time, you may remember, regular listeners, that that was the first time that a spinner other than Simon Harmer had taken five wickets or more at Chelmsford since 2016. So uh, just going back to that, so that's sort of... Uh, Sort of heart back to that. So, yeah, innings and 135 runs. Uh, huge victory for Hampshire. And on the live table, that takes Hampshire into second place above uh, Warwickshire. Warwickshire dropped to third now. They haven't played this week. So, uh, Warwickshire have played five. Hampshire have played six. As of Surrey, they've won uh, their game against uh, Kent today. Surrey uh, still with a big lead there on 104. That takes Hampshire to 70, 63, 73, actually 79 points. They'd level on points with Warwickshire, I make that. So it'll be interesting. I don't know what the difference is of the next. They'll be equal second. Let's put it that way. Uh, we'll say equal second on points uh, with uh, Warwickshire. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Sorry it hasn't actually been uh, as long a day as you thought it might be been uh, today. But a Hampshire win is an enjoyable day. That's for sure. Our attentions will now turn to the nursery ground where a certain Gareth Berg uh, it's playing for Limington. We might go over there and watch that a little bit uh, later. Uh, then again, we might not and just enjoy the rest of the uh, day off. Thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, sorry, Northamptonshire fans. Uh, wasn't uh, quite to, to be, but uh, plenty to ponder and plenty for that team to work on ahead of the next game. But the attention's turned to T20 now. We look forward to that. Thank you very much.